views expressed on the previous programs are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. I didn't hear anything about Drew Rosenstein or, uh, or Jerk Jerk Street. Advertisers or Must have been a good show. Oh! The biggest names, the best talent. What do you think, Fat Chris? Fat You're Chris listening is back to with Sports us today. Radio 560 WQAM. Miami for love. He's not taking it laying down. Except from Jolly Joe. No. Yes. 560 WQAM presents The Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, dial 5670560 in Dade and Broward. In other counties, call toll free 877-785-NEIL or pound 560 on your AT&T and Verizon wireless phones. The opinions expressed by I Neil, got a his guests, day. or his colleagues take the whole do not represent of WQAM management, staff, or sponsors. I, I took now, a deuce earlier. Talk. Show on 560 WQAM. Neil Rogers, guys. Hi, guys and gals. I'm Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. When I'm not shooting caribou from a helicopter hovering 50 feet off the ground, I'm a 44-year-old wife, mother, and future grandmother of an illegitimate child conceived out of wedlock. But I'm also an endorser, and I'm here today to tell you folks about an exciting new perfume for you gals out there. It's called Pentecostal Perfume. Nagalaga, Named after the religious practice I no longer associate myself with due to its controversial nature, Pentecostal perfume will make you smell divine. And make you speak in tongue. <clears throat> it's perfect for all occasions, whether you're hunting or running or taking a field trip to the nuclear plant. Gosh darn it, this is a fragrance for all you gals. Other perfumes just pale in comparison. I'm Sarah Palin, and I approve this fragrance. <laughs> You I thought Christianity was fairy tale. Absolutely. This religious thing was not for me. They held a big convention. They let me in for free. I had no idea what I was about to see. Oh! They were speaking in tongues. That made me a believer. It was kind of fun to stick it out of my mouth. Speak in tongues. They got me believing. My tongue is weaving from side to side. <laughs> The Lord will now embrace me I clap my tongue to the beat Now whatever I do, he'll forgive me Cause now I speak in tongues That makes me a believer And I'm having fun Playing around with my mouth Yeah, I speak in tongues Three at 560 WQAM. Happy Tuesday to you. It's Veterans Day. A tip of the hat to all the veterans, even the uh, dead ones. Well, yeah, especially what? them. Well, what do you mean, especially them? Why? Why do you say that? Well, because they got nothing going on. Well, that's what I'm saying. They don't appreciate it. They're dead. Well, all the way on the other side, they're up there, up there looking down. I, I just love when people mm -hmm. talk such nonsense. It's it's just a half a step away from speaking in tongues. By the way, there's an old, old cliche about not talking religion and politics and crap like that. Well, that's boring. Yeah. yeah. You're making fun of my religion. I think that that's a good idea. Make fun of everybody's religion and at least be consistent. Right. Don't just pick on one, then you're a bigot. It's one of the two things that it's there for, really. Yeah. Comedy. And the other and... one is to make money. Right. And control people's minds, what's left of them. I love that, but I'm going to play it all day long, speaking in tongues. And sure. Sarah Palin perfume interspersed in between. I, not that, I, it, I, not I, that I, it's really all that good, even though you like it. I think I, it's, I, I thought it was hysterical. A little dated anymore. Could but have, no, no, I don't mean that, but it could have been done a little bit better. I don't know. Somebody, well, somebody sent a caustic email about it last week. You know, they're always complaining. Oh, really? Somebody yeah. didn't like it? Yeah. 
Really? Oh, oh I'm yeah, sorry I missed that. So much better, yeah. Somebody didn't like it. Well, we could have chewed on that one. It's about that and the Chris Matthews one are the only two uh, funny ones we've had but in we've what, got about the national, yeah. Okay, here's the poll from yesterday, and then I've got an email that will set you free, baby. It's uh, Well, first I got this other thing about foreplay, and then we'll get to that email. The email is probably from the same Ojean Provocateur yesterday, but changing the name. Keep the hate emails coming. I love it. I love it. Oh, you don't handle criticism really well. Well, you know something? That's not what they pay us to come in here right. for every day, is to be criticized and critiqued. If you like the show, great. Have a good time. If you can tolerate it, that's even better. Or the other way around. But if you hate the show, what are you doing out there listening? What are your masochists? Oh, we hate you and we hate George and even that tub of crap fat Chris. We hate him, too. We, we just hate. Remember I said I was contemplating coming back down there and doing the show there? Yeah, I didn't take it seriously wanna. for a second. No. Not for well, a I, second. I thought about it for about a yeah, second. Yeah, well. And then Paco showed up here with Kentucky Fried yesterday at 5 o'clock, and I thought, no, life here is pretty good. And then I went to Woodbine last night and lost my ass, and I thought, well, I don't know. It's one of those things. You know what I'm going to do? I'll do whatever the hell I want to do. How do you like that? Ooh, what a and good you can idea. Send me... Now, if I do get a thousand hate emails, though, I might, I might hang it up. Yeah, right. What? I might hang it up. My coat. Mm -hmm. Who's the best musical duo? How many votes we got on there, Fatso? Eight. We have eight, uh, 26. Woo! So we'll get to a thousand pretty damn quick, and then we got the new poll on there. Thanks to Charlie B. Welcome back, Charlie. Welcome back to our world. He kind of abandoned us for a while, or maybe he was coming up with some new material. We got a really good poll from Charlie B. Here's the one that's going on right now on NeilRogers.com. Who's the best musical duo? Simon and Garfunkel winning hands down your pantaloonies, baby, 246. I would agree with that, but I didn't vote for them. I told you already, I voted for the Everly Brothers. It was, yeah, I have a soft, a hard spot for the Everly Brothers. Yeah, I voted for uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Well, I'm of course, front-running front phony, yeah. Steely Dan, 119. Are we out of gas? Yes, we're Are out we of gas. Are we out of Steely Dan? Oh, my God, you people seriously need help. Hall and Oates, 65. The Carpenter, 64. We almost left them off. That would have been an infomnia. That would have been atrocious. Mm -hmm. And how come they're not doing a lot better than that? Because mm -hmm. we have mostly a male know. audience. Mostly a male audience, and most guys it, don't want to admit it's they like love a, the Yeah, it's like a Barry Mantle and all that schmaltzy music. No, thing. No, no, people, no, 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 listen, no, people, no, 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 no. Let me get to the end no. of the sentence before you go ape. A lot of people Barry lump Manilow. them all in together. All that kind of well, what stuff. What have the Carpenters got to do with Barry Manilow? It's the same kind of music. It's schmaltzy, ballad -y stuff, love songs and things like that. The Carpenters' music was great. Barry Manilow sucks. Uh huh. I'm, Righteous I'm sure. Brothers, fifty. I heard that. Everly Brothers, thirty-eight. Oh, Don and Phil. Mm. Lester Flat and Earl Scruggs, twenty-nine. We got some country pickers out there. Some trailer trash. Brooks and Dunn, twenty-eight. Sam and Dave, twenty-one. I can see a turn nineteen. Wham, eighteen. Oh, crank it up. I love it. Down, 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 down. down, down. I like the hand bone to this. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Ha. Mm -hmm. Sunny and Cherry, 18. Tears for Fears, 15. Morgan's in the scene of 14. Boy, I was just to nail it right there, and you chopped it off. Didn't you? I don't know. Like I said. I don't know where the hell it starts. Where do I really care? I know. Les Paul and Mary Ford, Via Con Dios, on Capitol Records, 11. Now, Les Paul, who is the guitar maven, he's the one that started the... um. The multiple tracks, okay. I believe. Am I, I right? I don't. I I don't know that. I know. Yeah. He, uh, you know. He. Um, Mary Ford. He started like multiple guitar. orgasms, and Les Ford. Paul. He started the multiple tracks. Seals and Crofts ten. Smothers Brothers nine. Brothers Johnson eight. Now you played some of that yesterday, which I didn't know who the hell they were, and it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I like the Brothers Indigo Girls seven. Jeanette McDonald and Nelson Eddy seven. If you're a hundred years old, oh boy, talk about cornball crap. Nelson five. What was the uh, something about the rain? Not who will stop the rain. That was uh, Creedence Clearwater. What was the uh, after the rain? The, after the rain is that it? Boy, yeah, oh, 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 oh Fat Chris is a Nelson fan. No, but uh, when they what were what do you mean out, no? No, but when, when they were out, that was you? always on MTV. Unfortunately. Oh yeah. That was a Rick Nelson kid. You sure work for it. And then there's this song that doesn't suck as much as the other one. Yeah, you're right. I, I like this one. What's the name of this one? Love and Affection. Oh, yeah. Nice talk up. This is a good song. 
They harmonized well. Where is Nelson? They kind of faded real fast. Real fast. They faded from the scene. Okay, that's enough. Must have been that long hair. Jan and Dean for. Boy, could they sing or what? No, no. Could they pound out an ounce of sound? The Judds for. Chad and Jeremy. Chad Stewart and Jeremy Clyde won. And England, Dan and John Ford Coley, <laughs> none, none. Yeah. Come on now. Oh, I don't think anybody else heard of them either. Chris never knew, didn't know no. who they were. Chris didn't know who the hell that was. They got none. There's 839 votes, and they got the big. Oh, wow. I guess they weren't rock solid like our big O. He'll be on at two, by the way. Then we got the Mad Dog at Chula Steak two at four. Dolphins tonight seven o'clock. One of the worst abortions in history. And then eight to eleven, it's Curtis tonight for D A. Because D A. was on this morning for Joe along with Adam Cooper, Super Cooperstein, Super Cooper. And uh, Fat Chris says he's a good guy. Yep. Well, that's good enough for me. If he's a good guy, I mean, you know, and, and also can uh, speak. So, he's Les not Paul? A dumb... What? You were correct about Les Paul. Many recording innovations include overdubbing, delay, mm -hmm. effect, delay effects such as sound on sound and tape yeah. delay, phasing effects, and multi track recording. Multi track. He invented that stuff. And where, where would we be now without that? Where would the music and where would the carpenters have been without that? Mm hmm. That was one of their specialities. Was the uh, multiple tracks, Toulouse La tracks? You didn't play any Carpenters, I noticed. That was pretty nasty of you. I got them all. What do you want to hear? Well, just just crank one up uh, for a second or two. Hold on. Oh, wait till I get to today's email du jour. If I can get an email that good every day, we got to look for the next five years and two months. Five years, and I'm going to show up every day just to piss off people like that. No, that's not something anybody wants to hear. I don't even know what that is. All I can do. Here you go. <sighs> what is that? Goodbye oh, goodbye to love. But that's a strange. That's not the original version of it. Trust me. Trust me when I tell you that ain't the original version. I love that. I love that guitar thing at the end. But we don't have time for it. We don't have time to start around. It. Hey, Karen, how about some lettuce, okay? That guitar thing. Yeah, how about a lettuce sandwich on whole wheat would be good, Karen? Come on. S. S, honey, S. Have like a little, uh... Oh, so speaking of eating, what did I, uh... Popcorn chicken. Yes. Boy, that's good stuff from KFC. I'd never had that before, and it's real spicy, in the gravy, too. it's even better. Yeah, it's zingy. No, I don't need the gravy, okay? It's good not about gravy. need. I don't need it's not it. about need. I don't need it, I don't want it. It's about feed. I don't want it. Well, oh, I did get some Frank's original hot sauce, though, because, you know, Mexicans, everything's got to be like... I don't know what that's all about. Why has everything got to be so damn spicy and burn your guts out? Is Cuban food like that, too, or just Mexican food? No, Mexican food is spicy. And Cuban food is not? It's very Mediterranean. It's uh, onions, garlic, and uh, olive oil. Olio and, oliva? And, and some citrus. Pane. Citrus. How is, uh, what's his name doing, Eli Wallach? Is he still alive, that pastor? I don't know. Boy, let's kill him. Let's get a, let's get a lynch mob. 1013 at 560 WQAM. No portion of this program may be reproduced without the express written permission of WQAM, BZ Broadcast Group, Incorporated. Neil God. G is for the ghastly things it can do. U is for ugly rednecks who own more than two. And is for the NRA that wants your friends to die today. S is for the sedentary, pasty inbred buying many guns. That phallic symbol pleases you. Guns supplement your teeny mushroom. You your gun today to kill some kids for the NRA. Guns were made for schmucks like you. G is for the gory things you can do. U is undereducated inbred goons. N is for the NRA that spelled sideways says USA. Z Easy to get more of all the death that you adore. Guns kill anyone who bothers you. Guns will make your weenie feel so huge. Use my gun here, take it. When you clean it, please don't break it. 
guns were made to kill me too. You fell. Guns are made for schmucks like you. Guns, man. Big run on guns. Oh, there's liberal, there's socialist, there's communist. Uh, yeah. Everybody's got to have guns to protect themselves from the new communist regime. I thought it was very touching yesterday at the White House. There, I, And for a couple of seconds, I almost liked George W. Bush. Almost. Huh? Watching those clips that they showed 80 million times of the Obamas uh, visiting the White House mm. with George and Laura. Uh-huh. I almost liked him. I mean, you know, he looked uh, like, I don't know. Yeah, let's let this dark couple in here for let's let these darkies in for a few minutes. Not too long, you know. You hear the sirens coming? No. Yeah, you do. No. You can't hear that? No. Oh my god. Anyway, here's one. Uh, boy, there's just all kinds of good stuff, including another one about Chris. A couple about Chris. One right. from uh, the fake Damon Amendolora. <laughs> That's really sensational. I'll get to that other one, by the way, the old coot from Hallandale. I'll get to you. See, if I can get one good long hate mail like email every day like that, it can make, you know, like an hour and a half of the show. You've got to step down. You're killing us. Well, you know, turn it off. No, I don't want to turn it off. I'm listening right now, and you've got to go away. Go away. <laughs> Talk about the dog barking at the moon. My God. At the cock moon. Here's one from Wynn, who I thought had more common sense than this. He's a regular for going back years and years. Uh, did you know that Cigar Dave is even on the air or where you would find him anymore? Dave Zeplowitz, whatever his name is. Are you asking me or are you reading the email? No, I'm asking you. No, I don't know. Hi, Neil. Did you hear how Cigar Dave opened his show this past Saturday? Oh, yeah. I was listening. I was sitting right there. <laughs> oh, my God. When? What's happened to you? Randy was talking about it yesterday. Uh, no. Oh. Howard! Something to the effect of... The United States of America, born July 4th, 1776, deceased November 4th, 2008. Then he went out to spot more right-wing crap. The audio was here and it's got a link, which I'll pass. Randy was talking about Cigar Dave. Good God. Howard! That's something I'd sure be talking about if I had that national audience. But she's the goddess, you know. And I'm sorry, I apologize for stealing all of her drop-ins like... Oh! Jonathan says, Jonathan and Boca, look what I found. It's a picture of my ugly puss... And it uh, goes back to the whammy thing. It was actually a, an ad. And it says, Miami, I'm sitting in front of a microphone. TV just got ugly. Neil Rogers, primetime Monday through Friday. Boy, that whammy was really quite an experience, wasn't it? Wasn't that well done? It Thanks, sure was. Thanks, by the way. Whammy. God, it sucks. Thanks to Marvin Rawman and uh, whoever else got me involved in that. And Norma Kent, too. Norma's still uh, absent. A wall. No happy birthday greeting. It's already like almost a week. Uh, tomorrow will be a week. No happy birthday, no uh, many returns, no uh, how's it going, no uh, how's your life, no nothing. Hey, Norma. You fairy. The uh, fake Greg Budell says, hi, Neil, happy belated. Is Chris back today? George has been very caustic and surly lately. He should go on the Steve Kane show. And you should come back to Miami. I'll bring you food. Did you hear Mo got fired from Sirius NFL Radio, Channel 124? He's no longer on late hits. Have you heard from Captain Dave lately? Signed, GBB, Gregory Benjamin Budell, a fake one. Now, I didn't know about uh, Mo, and uh, quite frankly, I heard him doing that Carolina-Oakland game on radio over the weekend. And I don't know if he got fired or not. Did he get fired, Fatso? I didn't even know he was working. Well, he gets fired everywhere, sooner or later. The fake Joey Reynolds says, Neil, I love your talk-ups. You're a regular Ron St. John on 97A1A, your music way. Is Chris a fruit? I love the big O. He's got passion. He can be the new host of Passion Phones. He's a He's summer really squash. Rock solid. What? Chris, he's a summer squash. I don't know if that's a fruit or a vegetable. No. He's a vegetable, believe me. He ain't no fruit. There's Definitely only not. one fairy on the, this show, and you're listening to him right now. The sound of the fag. The old fat faggot. That's me. Neil, God! That's right. And you people, all you negative people, you inspire me to stick around every minute of, and every second of that contract. I've got five years and a month and a half to go. Not that I'm counting. And I'm going to be here as long as I'm, as the good Lord willing, as Wichita used to say. Of course, now he's dead. But the good Lord willing, I'll be here every one of those days. And the good deal is that those next five years, even though I'm making like 50 bucks a week, uh, I still have the same great schedule, the same scam in the summertime. When George gets to work all those extra days and hours and doesn't get paid a dime for it. That's right. 
Okay. Oh, here's one from uh, the fake Damon of Mandalore. Then I'll get to that really good one from... Who is it? What's the fake name? Oh, and I got the story about foreplay. Then I'll get to it. Lucas in Hallandale. Lucas. Ah, ah. Lucas is uh, squeezing his uh, stick shift right now while he's listening to the show. Damon, the fake Damon, says, I'm disgusted by Fat Chris. And now, I haven't had a chance. This is so long. I haven't had a chance to proofread this, so I might have to, like, leave certain things out. Okay. How are you, Neil? I have some more disturbing news oh, for you. Oh, sorry. Just getting ready. Again, I want to apologize to Fat Chris. I really like Fat Chris. I don't like to tell on you, but I feel that I must. Last week when I caught Fatso going to town on himself while looking at a picture of fat, oiled up Jolly Joe, I thought that Chris was just fat and disturbed. I didn't think that these two warthogs were actually giving it to each other up the bloody old scat infected, her, infested Hershey Highway, but I was dead wrong. We didn't have to bleep any of that yet, right? No. Close. What? Oh, nothing. Chris is making a funny face. Uh, but he is. I had to go over to Fatso's house yesterday to pick up some electronics for the station. We'll never forget what I saw. It was a horrendous sight, Neil, something no one should ever have to be witness to. I walked up to Fatso's door, knocked a couple of times, nobody answered, so I decided to try the door handle and see if it was unlocked. The biggest mistake of my life. I slowly walked into the front door. There were pictures of a, on the mantle of an entrance hallway of Fat Chris when he was a little younger and a bit skinnier. As I walked farther into this house of horrors, I got suspicious when I saw a picture of Jolly Joe on the wall. I continued into the house, heard some Marvin Gaye sexual feeling music coming from the back of the house. I continued to the back of the house to see where the music was coming from. I came to a closed door. I think it was Chris's room because there was a sign on the door that read Beached Whale Crossing. I slowly cracked open the door. This was a huge mistake. Fat Chris and Jolly Joe were standing in the bedroom kissing very passionately. Jolly Joe then began unbuttoning Chris's shirt. Jolly Joe removed Fatso's shirt, revealing Fatso's hairy chest and fat tomato-looking nipples. You, you know, uh, I think I should stop you. It's getting very, uh, I'm going to have to start bleeping this whole thing. Why? It's gross. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Well, you know, faggery is gross to begin with. But Jolly Joe started faggery? gently kissing Fat Chris's neck and working his way down to Chris's chest. Jolly Joe then began licking fat, big, red, hairy, red tomato nipples. I'm, I'm changing some of this. <laughs> Joe had to st stop a couple of times to pull bits of Chris's nipple hair from between his yellow teeth. This was an ungodly sight. Fat Chris then proceeded to remove all of Jolly Joe's clothing as well as his own. When Chris removed his underwear, he threw them toward the door of the bedroom. The underwear landed right in front of me. I made the mistake of looking down at it. There were, <laughs> there were dark brown streak marks and bits of uh, other things on the underwear. I wanted to puke. I have to edit this as I go along. There were Jolly Joe and Fat Chris standing there naked and erect. Fat Chris laid Jolly Joe down on his stomach and proceeded to hogtie Jolly Joe and put a red gimp ball in his mouth. After Joe was all tied up, Fatso mounted Joe from the back and proceeded to do... <laughs> to do something that I can't read. It was, it was the most disturbing sight ever seen. Fat Chris was sweating pro profusely, pumping Jolly Joe in his disgusting something for about 50 minutes until he screamed, Cream pie. <laughs> And was done. I wonder if that's <laughs> banana cream pie. Oh, no. Probably uh, not. Probably chocolate cream pie. Oh, I'm sorry. That's even worse. At this point, I could take no more rent out of that house as fast as I could. I'll never be able to get the images of the two fat hogs going to town on each other out of my head. I'm scarred for life. Please, Neil, fire Chris. His something are very disturbing and atrocious. Fat Chris needs to be taught a lesson. Gay sex between two whales in public is unacceptable behavior from an adult. Jolly Joe and Fat Chris should be ashamed of themselves. I hope they both get you know what. Thanks, Damon. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Don Shula, I have them. Oh. Today on TMZ. Angelina, you're on the cover of W Magazine breastfeeding your twins. I am. And um, you're breastfeeding now, I see. Yes, certainly for now. It's, it's my job. Your job? You're breastfeeding not only your new twins, you're nursing all six of your kids, including the seven-year-old. Mmm, that tastes so good. It's yummy. That's weird. It's also smart. Wait a minute. That's the neighbor's kid. But no child left behind means no child left behind. He's 15 years Years old. Hey, get out of here, you little freak. I'm sorry, man. I'm pretty drunk. Today on TMZ. <laughs> um.
1033, 27 before 11 at 560 WQAM. Boy, now we know why uh, Fred Chris wasn't with us yesterday. Why is that? Because you were otherwise occupado with your good buddy. Oh, uh, no. Jim in England says the greatest singing duo of the whole of music are undoubtedly Graham Parsons and Emmy Lou Harris. Who are they? Emmy Lou Harris? Yeah. Country? Graham Ish? Parsons? Never heard of him. No. Well, don't forget, this is Jim in England. I don't normally get emotional when listening to songs, but those two doing Love Hurts just sends me all gushy, says Jim. Also, when it comes to singing duos, Moe and Geldy must be contenders. Doi, 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 doi. I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the doys are back in town. Who can even come close to matching that? Certainly not uh, Jim, uh, what were Glenn, uh, what, what's her name? Glenn Miller. Dan, and, yeah. Dan Ford, yeah, Glenn Miller and uh, Maishi Pupik and Dave Miller. Before we get to the email of the century, I'm, I'm not really sure which is better, the one yesterday, the two yesterday from, uh, what was his name? I forgot. Um, Terry. Terry in Boynton Beach or something like that. We'll get to it. Foreplay is overrated, researchers claim. Foreplay may be overrated according to a survey based on 2,300 women, which found that it has little or no significance when it comes to the likelihood of having an orgasm. The duration of intercourse, 16.2 minutes on average, is the clincher, according to the research. The findings suggest that sex therapists who emphasize the value of foreplay may have that... It says, may have that been getting it wrong. A little typo here. May have been getting it wrong. This is from the Telegraph UK. They got a little carried away. In contrast to the assumptions of many sex therapists and educators, more attention should be given to improve the quality and duration of intercourse rather than for places. Professor Stuart Brody of the University of West Scotland and Professor Peter Weiss from Charles University in Prague. In the study reported in the Journal of Sexual Medicine, the academics quizzed a representative sample of 2,360 Czech women of all ages about the details of their sex lives, including orgasmic consistency with a partner, along with estimated duration of foreplay and intercourse. Czech women? Well, let me ask you, are, are people, like, doing it with a stopwatch or what? Uh, apparently. Uh, evidently. Results show that for the women in the study, the average duration of foreplay was 15.4 minutes and intercourse 16.2 minutes. They must be screwing with a stopwatch. That's not how you do it. Don't screw with it too much. The damn button might fall Right, off. no, you're supposed to use your parts. The researchers point out that 16.2 minutes is considerably longer than reported in American studies where intercourse was found to last on average seven minutes. They added it could be that this reflects a greater appreciation of intercourse and sensuality by Europeans than Americans. The researchers looked at frequency of orgasm in women and foreplay and intercourse data. They concluded links with foreplay were insignificant. Instead, they suggest that the longer intercourse lasts, the greater the probability of orgasm for the women. This was a large number of women. The results are robust, says Professor Brody. Sex therapists and educators put the overwhelming emphasis on foreplay, but they need to be guided by the evidence which shows that it is not the case. Intercourse is significantly more important. Our findings should lead researchers, educators, and clinicians to reconsider the contribution to foreplay and intercourse. Less foreplay, more screw your brains out. Got it? Got it. Less Got foreplay, it. more in and out. How are we doing on a poll there, Fat Chris? Fat we Chris and Jolly Joe could teach you. What? 887. 887. We're closing it on nine. I think when we get to 900, I'll change it. Okay. In fact, you know what? I'm going to change it right now. Say what? What? No? No. Well, why not? Calm down. Just hit nine. The Dow is down 202 points, by the way. Not looking good. GM is on the verge of going bust. Nobody's got a job. Nobody's got any money. Meanwhile, I keep getting these big, fat paychecks every two weeks for all these negatory a-holes out there. Oh, wait till I get to that, that one. That's so good. And the, and the best part of it is they think that it disturbs me reading this garbage. I find it most amusing that people who hate me like poison and just want to uh, just go away, you know. Oh, here's one from the fake Chris Whalen. <laughs> Oh, who could have ever dreamed that these emails would have been so good? Not the real ones, the fake ones. Right. Oh, here's Probably all the from, same person. Too. Here's one from the fake Alice Rantel. Forget all the hateful no-life losers. You're the best talk show host in the history of Miami Radio, period. You are a legend and a, a heritage host. I love walking down Mamory Lane. Can you play some of your old bits from time to time? Young Neil and Key West Vice were two of my favorites. Do you ever ha hear from your longtime friend? You used, used to do nights on WFTL. What does that mean? Alice, P.S. Debbie Ellis and Sandy say hi. 
Thanks, Faye Callis. Captain Davis on Sirius Channel 144 and XM 166. You're on fire today. I'm on the floor, says the fake Joey Reynolds. Wouldn't be the first time, Joey. Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn. Conway oh. was a favorite of Suds Coleman. What? I hate Conway Twitty. You hate Conway's Twitty? I hate him. Well, why? Because uh, he sucks. He's ugly and he sucks. He's ugly? Why would that make a difference? It just so happens. To a hetero like you. It doesn't. Just so David Gates, I love his music, but he's uh, ugly. 888 on the poll. So you don't, why, why is it you don't want me to change it yet? Just to give you a hard time. Fat Chris says, the fake Fat Chris says, I'm absolutely disgusted by these attacks being presented against me. I've decided to quit the show. I'm tired of crying myself to sleep every night because of these vicious attacks. Jolly Joe and I have decided to become a couple now. We don't hog, we don't hog tie each other up, but we do give it to each other up the old, oh, I can't say that, every night. I also want you to know that Jolly Joe clean. <laughs> oh, oh God! And that there are no brown streaks in either one of our underwear. These slanderous attacks need to stop right now. I'm sorry, I'm fat and gay, Neil, but so are you. And by the way, who the hell is Damon to rip me? Just the other day, I saw him sticking it to Flea in the men's room. I'm very pissed off, Neil. The show is destroying my reputation. Die, Damon, die! These slanderous attacks need to stop immediately, or I am something you. It's chopped off. That's probably know. the most important part of the email. Suing off. you? Yeah, I'm suing. That's it. Why, do you have this also? No, I just took that's, a guess. That's what it says, actually. They need to stop me or I'm suing you, says Fat Chris. A fat boy named Sue. Biggest names. The best. Sports leader. The biggest names, the best talent. It's the Mad Dog, Jim Mandich. Afternoon. Oh, 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 and there's four minutes left in the hour. So let's take some calls. Pauline, hello. Yeah, Neil, how's it going? Great. That's good. Listen, I canceled my subscription to the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. Oh, the good old DNC. What an abortion that paper is. Then I asked how many other people did likewise, and they said none of my business. Yeah, well, they're real nice over there. Okay, well, I just thought I'd let you know. You're a fine American. Have a nice life. Well, hello. I want to speak to Neil. You got him. Am I on? Yeah. Neil. Yeah. Neil, you're a stinky pinko glue sniffing bedwetter and a pansy. Great call. This is the day so far. Did he say pansy? Who does he get off? What a mung brain. I run my bike 30 miles every Saturday to do this show, and this guy calls me named. Shame on you, sir. Shame on you. By the way, have you seen some of those bad boys at the new AMP? <laughs> now, what are you cackling about, eggs? Is this my John? A million producers in the world, and they stick me in here with an egg. <laughs> Shut his mic off. Seneca Castle, hello. Oh, Neil, you used to be such a nice boy, and now you're so terrible. Yeah, but you can't shut it off. You can't shut it off. <sighs> I don't need this. I have offers from other stations. Batavia, Elmira, Fredonia. But instead, I stay here and entertain you grotesque, subhuman doodle bag. Unbelievable. Geneva, hello. Hello, is this Neil Rogers? What kind of phone are you on, sir? How's that again? Do you have a dial phone or what? No, I had to put it to the operator. <laughs> Well let's, well, let's not get into that. Hey, I was listening to Joey Reynolds on WKBW last night. 
Somebody has to. Did you hear what he's been saying about you? No, I don't listen anymore. He's a doddering old man. He claims he's only 40. Yeah, right. And do we beat Truman, too? <laughs> oh, shut up, Egg. You're pathetic. And if you think he's bad now, wait till he hatches. Oh, boy. Okay, when we come back, maybe the egg will come out of his shell. But I hope not. Well, there you go. That's one more time for this year. 1047 at 560 WQM. I don't know if you're as tired of that as I am, but I think uh, Alice Rantel wanted to hear that, so who the hell might have say no? It's It's been a while, but yeah, certainly I've uh, gotten Plus, tired it kills some really time good time, ago. too. Sure. I got one from the uh, fake Woody Graber before we get to the good stuff. Oh, boy. Oh, I changed the poll, too, Fat Chris. Cool. Without your permission. See, now oh, it's uh, just cool. Cool. Yeah, well, cool it. We hit, oh, we didn't even hit the 900? No. You slacker. You just got through saying cool. Well, because I assumed we hit 900. Is, is there a doubt we were going to get to 900? What's the point? Okay, let's move along here. 896. Well, there you go, 896. Pick up sticks. Fake Woody Graber says, your heyday is over, Neil. You've completely lost touch with the audience. You were once great, Neil, but now you suck huge rhinoceros balls. You're not funny anymore. You're a huge loser, Neil. You sit up there in Toronto with your little spick boyfriend, giving it uh, to each other in the... and paying for all his meals. You're being used, Neil. Stop giving your money to ungrateful people. You were once great, Neil, but now we're just another radio loser whose career is in the toilet. I'm telling you this, Neil, because I love you. Retire already and go out while you're still on top. Woody. Retire! No, um, no thanks. Okay, here's the final tally on the Fat Chris's duo poll. That was a good one. Best musical duo. That was from Sean in Hollywood, I believe. Wasn't it? Yep. Simon and Garfunkel, kick ass, 265. Steely Dan, 133. Oh, that is so painful. Hall and Oates, 72. The Carpenter, 71, right on their ass. Righteous Brothers, 51. The Everly Brothers, 41. On Cadence Records, Don and Phil. Lester Flat, Earl Scruggs, 33. Brooks and Dunn had... About 30, man. And I still have no idea who they are. Country? Yes, well, isn't that interesting that Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs and Brooks and Dunn were like right side by each? Sam and Dave, 23. Wham, 22. You fairy. I can Tina Turner, 20. Tears for Fears, 19. Sonny and Cher, 19. What a horrible thought that is. Logan, I, I guess a lot of people figured that the uh, poll question was, name a musical duo. That's how they always do it. Logan's and Messina, 16. Les Paul and Mary Ford, 12. Vaya con Dios. Uh, that's the only song I can think of by them. Les Paul and Mary Ford. I bet you don't have any in there, do you? Let me uh, let me fire up the player and see what's in here. Seals and Croft's 11. Smothers Brothers 11. The Smothers Brothers? Oh, That's funny. The Brothers Johnson 9. Jeanette McDonald, Nelson Eddie 8. The Indigo Girls 7. Nelson 6. Who am I supposed to be looking for? Len what? Les Paul. Les Paul and Mary Ford. Nelson 6. Jan and Dean 5. The Judds 4. England Dan and John Ford Cootie 2. And Chad and Jeremy only 1. Chad Stewart and Jeremy Clyde on Columbia Records. Summer Song, wasn't that one of their hits? Chad and Jeremy? Da, 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 da. Yeah, Summer Song, I think. Wasn't that the name of that? Sounds well, right. you find Les Paul first. Vaya con Dios. I, I can't think of any others. I could get my book, but I'm too old and fat to go. No, I got up. no Les Paul. You got no Les Paul? Sorry. Oh, my uh, yeah. God. Okay, here's the new big poll. Scam. How many votes we got on the new one up there? I don't know. Someone has to vote over here first. What? Someone has to vote over here so I can see. You can't do it? Why well, you let George vote? Go ahead. Vote for something. Yeah, fight over it. I could at least tolerate an insult to my blank. We've got 24 votes. Intelligence, nine. Well, I'm going to read it off. I printed it out. That's why I don't know how many votes we got. And I don't want to do it again. Penis size, two. Income level one, political preferences one, line of work one, spouse one, choice of car I drive one. That was me. I voted for that. Don't be knocking Corvettes, okay, you losers. Like that Mustang jerk yesterday. Oh, yeah, why don't you get a real car, a Mustang, Neil? <laughs> Family one, looks one. You can uh, insult my looks all you want, you'll be honest. I look like crap. No votes yet for gang, gender, state or region, beer preference, taste in women or men, native country, native language, Native language. Incredibly. Disability, fashion style, school or college, sports team preference, height, weight, breast size. Yeah, yeah, don't be knocking my breast size. In fact, Chris is too. He's got gigantic boobies. Sexual persuasion, straight, gay, bi, etc. 
Religion, ethnicity, or race, name, mama, or performance in bed. I could at least tolerate an insult to which of those. And that's a good poll. That's Charlie I just, uh, Nice going, Charlie. Huh? I just voted for height. Before 39. You were, so. 39 what? Votes. Bottles of beer on the wall. Okay, here comes one of the all-time great emails, Lucas Burns in Hallandale, although I think Lucas is probably uh, Terry from yesterday. What? It burns. In fact, maybe both of them are still Dan from Maryland. I really don't know. Some malcontent. And it says, subject, something you need to read. It's really important that you do. And it was so important that Lucas said it twice. Lucas from Hallandale, who's trying to tell us. I have no life. Neil, I know you don't handle criticism very well, that you get very defensive when anyone dares to challenge one of your opinions. And God forbid you would ever read an email on here which contains an opinion that varies from yours. God forbid, right, like the one I read twice yesterday and the one I'm reading now. Right, Lucas. But you, re you really do need to stop before your show gets so bad that nobody remembers that you were once a decent radio personality. You got an email from someone named Terry yesterday who I could not possibly agree with more. You're out of touch with the people of Miami, and you even went so far as to pathetically jump on the Obama bandwagon in an effort to win cool points with your younger listeners, even though most people listening to your show are older people who work and have to pay taxes, and in that case undoubtedly supported McCain. Yeah, most of our people are McCain people, right. In addition to which, as far as jumping on a bandwagon, I was pushing Obama long before anybody in the audience ever even heard of him. I said, that's your next president. But I jumped on the bandwagon, of course. You were somewhat amusing at one time, but now your show is just awful. Which is why this individual, Lucas and Hallandale, listens every minute of every day. He's an expert on the show. He can tell you the content of every show every day and how much he hates it. This, this is why this, all, all of these crack me up. Anybody with even the, like a 1% of their brain remaining knows that anybody who dislikes a show, a movie, or whatever, uh, they, they find something else to entertain themselves, to amuse. The infusion of new, younger, and superior talent, including Jorge Sedano, a rising star, mark my words, Sid Rosenberg, a legitimate star, and Dan LaBastard, one of the funniest men in radio, are squeezing the out-of-touch guy with no topics or guests right out of this market. Not to mention the fact you never even talk about sports on your show, which, newsflash, people actually care about. So this is obviously from somebody across the street. And no, this is not a sports show. Never has been, never will be. We got 20 hours of that crap the rest of the day. Find something. Why aren't you listening to a sports show? I didn't even mention that you're going head-to-head -head with Paul Castronova, who's by far more original <laughs> and talented than you ever were. There was a time when you were relevant and funny. That time long has passed. Your show is awful and your time is up. So just step away, Neil. You can't do it anymore. Just step away. Not with the talent surplus Miami has to offer now, and you're out of material. Seriously, you never have a topic. And then he goes on to talk about what my topic is. Yeah, I'm well, sure you'll... What? Maybe now you'll have one. Poop. He says my topic is poop. Caca. Right. I'm sure you'll continue mailing it in and collecting your checks after reading this. That's right. I'm not going to walk away just because some loser in uh, Hallandale, who probably is the guy from yesterday in uh, Boynton Beach, sent me a stupid email anonymous. I really do wish you'd quit, though, because I can't stand listening to your show now. So I have to quit for him to find something else to listen to. You, know, you follow the logic here? Mm -hmm. You talk about poop every day now. For the love of God, poop. Why? You have nothing. Lucas M. Burns in Hallandale. It burns. And then underneath his name, address, email address, and phone number, it says, Have a blessed day under thee and yours. <laughs> have a blessed day under thee and yours. Hey, stick it up the old shoot, Lucas. In fact, just get a gun and shoot. I would say shoot your brains out, but you could, you know, you have to stick it in your Wreck to find them. Step away. Step aside. No. Just walk away. Yeah, I'm just going to walk away to make Lucas happy. Step away. You just can't do it anymore. Your show is awful and your time is up. And you never, first he says you never have a topic. Then he says my topic is poop. I talk about poop every day. Poop and then, of course, the famous crap. That too, a little bit. Well, thanks, Lucas. I'm glad you're enjoying the show. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Retire. Retire. You're killing us. The sports leader. The biggest names. The best talent. Oh, we got a revised You're schedule. You're listening Bullet, to Sports Bullet. Radio 560 WQAM. Miami for Lauderdale. This is the Neil Rogers So what's the show. change on here, Fat? So you... This is uh, no, there's a whole bunch of changes. I guess, Still says George uh, and Zach on Thursday. Questions. Yeah, well, that's not important for the change. Do you have what it takes to be in Neil's will? If you do, you will. Sport Hole Radio 560 WQAM invites you to listen and win.
morning with the 560 QAM Neil's Will Contest. Simply cut and paste someone else's profile and pick to MySpace. Or in 50 words or less, write why you should be in Neil's Will on the back of a postcard and send it to WQAM Studios in the McAllister Hotel. Then, when you hear this sound, <laughs> that's your chance to inherit millions, perhaps even billions of dollars. Billions of dollars, billions of dollars, billions of dollars. All contestants must be male, no younger than 18, no older than 25, must be shaven and smooth. Judges reserve the right to eliminate contestants based on a Brady Quinn similarity rating scale of 1 to 10. Runners up will receive an autographed duplicate of Neil's will suitable for framing. Any duplicates of Neil's will found under your windshield wiper in the parking lot will be voided by law. All prizes will be awarded by Michael Anthony, and the grand prize winners are asked to be patient for an indefinite period of time until Neil decides to die. 1101 at 560 WQM. So what's the changes on the schedule? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I thought Fatsa was just uh, verbalizing it. No, it's uh, it's all those things where the uh, asterisks are. That's the updates. Asterisks? There ain't no asterisk on my schedule. On the left-hand side, next to the yeah. times, there's little asterisks. Oh, 5 to 7 a.m. Thursday morning, Geldy. Well, who the hell cares? Ow! Yeah, Jesus, God. Talk about taking yourself too importantly, Clarence. Good golly. I, I think Clarence probably sent that uh, email. The one from Lucas, you know? Try okay. to make it sound like it was from somebody sense. across the street. Yeah, he's he's infatuated with Dan LeBastard. In fact, he probably would like me to walk away so they can woo Dan LeBastard to come over to QAM and put his award-winning show on in midday. Wouldn't that be a big improvement? Huh? You betcha. Talk some sports, Neil. Sure, that's Clarence. We're on to you, Clarence. Where's the follow-up, by the way, Lucas? I don't see no follow-up. Yesterday, when you were like Terry or whatever the hell your name was, at least you had the balls to give us a follow-up. You don't talk about any... You have no topic. You just... Oh, you're killing us. Oh. Can't you just see somebody standing over Lucas's head with a gun to his forehead and the radio cranked up real loud every day from 10 to 2? Can you see that? I'd like to see that. I can envision that. A whole bunch of people out there who are forced to listen to this show against their will. Oh, my God, I can't take it anymore. This is killing me. Find something else amusing, especially with all that great new talent out there, Radio Land. A Republican congressman from Georgia said yesterday he fears that President-elect Obama will establish a Gestapo-like security force to impose a Marxist dictatorship. It may sound a little crazy and off-base, but the thing is, he's the one who proposed the National Security Force, represented Paul Brown, said of Obama, in an interview yesterday with the Associated Press. I'm just trying to bring attention to the fact that we may, may not, I hope not, but we may have a problem with that type of philosophy of radical socialism or Marxism. A lunatic from Georgia. At any rate. T. Gann says, was catching up with the soaps last night. I don't watch soaps anymore. I don't use soap. I don't watch soap. I was body wash, even with the plastic bottles. Notice that Luis, Galen Gearing, and Sam Bennett, James Hyde, from Passions have resurfaced, along with Kevin Dobson, Mac McKenzie from Knott's Landing, on Sands Through the Hourglass Soap, Days of Our Lives, with McDonald Carey. Like Sands Through the Hourglass. What is it? How does he say? Well, he's been dead for 100 years, McDonald Carey, but they still use the same open, I believe, on that ridiculous show. I wonder if that Russian super spy is still on there. At any rate, it's a silly show. It's not up to your standards, George. Okay. Here's one from the fake Josh Cordes. It says from Josh Cordes at the real Josh Cordes dot uh, yada yada. WTF, Neil, I can't believe you let that fat tub of goo Chris get away with. He shows up for work whenever he feels like it, talks nasty about you behind your back to Clarence, and has been having day-long mattress madness with Jolly Joe. I miss putting the stories on the website one day and you jump all over me. It's so unfair and truly hurts me deep down to the core. I think the only way you can make up to me is sending me a check today. No. If I were you, I'd FedEx it to me for delivery tomorrow morning. No. This would be the only way to prove your affection for me. No. And all that I've done to make your website and radio show a success over all these years at WQAM. No. Also, he says, hi, Brandon, my sugar pants baby. Yours in Christ, Josh Cordes. That might be the real one, you know. That made sense. Yeah. Makes sense to me. How are we doing on the new survey, Fatso? You finally got a vote on there or what? Oh, yeah, we vote on here. Uh, we got 87. 86, 87 votes already, but we just put, we just put the new thing up there. It's like, it's like the uh, thing last Thursday. George wouldn't have believed it. You, you, unless you saw it with your own eyes. Am I right? Right. 
the restaurant certificates. They went in less than just in a matter of seconds. I clicked on it the first time and it said remaining certificates remaining zero. Is that special or what? Even though we don't have any audience. By the way, what what was the story in that last trend? How did uh, Castronova do? One moment, please. Oh, because he's only on for what twenty hours a day, and and here we got Fat Chris complaining about working seventeen hours or something. If a, if an old, tired, worn out tub like Castronova can work fifteen, twenty hours a day, you can do it too, buddy. Oh, this is men eighteen plus. Why do we care about that? This is June, July, and August. Where the hell is the tre Is the a book? You got the book? Not on me, no. I got the book. Oh, good. Oh, I got the book. Let me take a look. Well, I got my. I still ought to start Schmidt canning some of this, you know. I got readings from a hundred years ago when we had some. Midday. Oh, here's persons twenty five fifty four. Do we care about that? No. Come on, Neil. Christ, boy, there is just tons of stuff. I bet you this is old stuff, too. Spring 2008. I, I can't find it. But during the break, I can at least throw all this crap out, right? Wouldn't you, th wouldn't you throw our ratings out? Why not? Ain't no good. I know that uh, what's-his-name did, Joe Bell. He flushed him right down the toilet. Thanks a lot, Jolly Joe, by the way, for destroying the radio station. Let's see. Summer 2008. Oh, that's it. Summer 2008. I finally got it. Got it. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Big had a 4.5, and we had a 4.0. They were fifth, we were sixth. So that old Polly, he beat us. He beat our ass. Of course, that was George. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, George likes to uh, throw us under the bus. All the time. Torpedo. Torpedo the station. So what's the big deal with that? That they've got 8 million billboards. Their billboards, by the way, are the ugliest waste of time I've ever seen in my life. Have you seen those? The ones for no. Ron and Paul? No. Real caca. Just has their names. It doesn't say anything, really. Graham Parsons died in 1973 of a drug overdose, somebody informs me. He was considered one of the first country rock artists and was a member of the Birds when they recorded their album Sweethearts of the Rodeo was also a friend of the Stones and the Eagles. He reportedly was asked to leave the Stones' sessions of exile on Main Street because he was a bad influence on Keith Richard, of all people. Amy Lou Harris is a pretty decent country singer and recorded a couple of albums with Dolly Parton and Linda Ronstadt. I have her albums Roses in the Snow and Blue Kentucky Girl, Country Without Being Too Rednecky. She does a duet with Don Everly on Every Time You Leave. Don Everly from the Everly Brothers. Hmm. Then it says, D.A. interviewed a high school basketball player going to the Gators, turned over to Sid, and he had two professional women pool players on. Wow, is all it says. Yeah, too bad we can't live up to that kind of fantastic programming. You know what? Pool players. We got some pocket pool players coming on tomorrow. Jolly Joe and Fat Chris. Oh, here's the fake Johnny Dark. No, this is the real one, I think. Yep, this is the real one, I'm sure. <laughs> Positive. That's because we called him for being a, a bigoted redneck, which is exactly what he is. Duda, duda. I'll print it out. Don't read it. It's more hate. Hate from Johnny Dark. Shouldn't I feel bad about that? No. No. We hate you, Johnny. Don and Roger said, it's amazing how all the people who hate you listen to you every day instead of listening to uh, all that so-called wonderful new talent in Miami. Well, we'll keep it short and uh, sweet. You're one in a million, Neil coming from two of probably tens of thousands who listen to you every day, Neil God, Don and Roger. Thank you, Don and Roger, for coming to my defense. Coming to my defense. Nobody else is, but Don and Roger are. Against those intemperate attacks. Including this one from Johnny Dork, who says... Oh, it is Johnny Dark. It's the real one, I'm sure. Deal, those callers had a point. You're a shadow of your former self. The mistake you made was not keeping up with the times. Those times you had me and Fat Rich in the studio, you should have let me talk on Mike. Oh, yeah, this is fake. Howard is successful because he surrounds himself with an interesting cast. I'm sorry, but boring George and Fat Chris are not interesting. Not as interesting as you, Johnny. Remember the day he came in for the free lunch? He sure added a lot to the show. Yep. Not. Anybody who reads liner cards for a living. It's 72 along the coast. Yeah. 
Well, what kind of a broadcaster is that? Can't complain about Johnny's personality. You want to know why? Doesn't have one? Right. You got rid of the bird, didn't give uh, mic time to people who could have added to the show. You were revolutionary in the 80s with your stream of consciousness humor, making characters of behind-the-scenes people like Boy Gary, Mike Disney, Bob Green, the salespeople, etc. You should have surrounded yourself with an ensemble cast. You had the talent to do this at WIOD with Mitch Lewis and others. At WQM, you're surrounded by a bunch of sports nerds. You still have it, but you've become fat and lazy. You should have listened to Phil Henry. <laughs> Are you oh, sure? Yeah. Who drove the Boston ratings down 91% in the last book. Nice going, Phil. I'm a shadow of my former self. From uh, the bitter, doo licking Johnny Dark. Also, Graham Parsons was in The Birds and the Flying Burrito Brothers, as the fake Rose Folger. Oh, also, Les Paul and Mary Ford did How High the Moon, How High the Cockamoon. Remember that? Mm-hmm. You do? No, you know. I thought oh, you I had every, every song that was ever recorded in that thing. I'm trying Vaya to say. Vaya con Dios. What's the name of it? What am I looking for in this song? You're not going to. You don't have it. Mary Ford, what? Give me a chance. Ford es uh, Cadillac Escalade. Ford Taurus. No, I don't have that. Like sands through the hourglass, and so are the days of our lives. That's the line. Thank you so much, BNA, Brian. Or in my case, like sands through the hourglass, and so are the days I spend writing public policy papers for grad school. From your number one fan in St. Augustine, a very blue Florida. Thanks, Brian. Brian likes me. He may not like the show, but he likes me. That's the important thing. We don't care whether you like the show, just like us, especially Fat Chris. He's under a lot of duress. In fact, uh, Jolly Joe said you ought to see that pink duress. <laughs> Lovely. Biggest name. It's no, it's pink to This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Uh. Come on, Fat, so where is well, it? He's not even in there. Forget about that oh sports leader gosh. business. She Wait, fakes orgasms. I fake foreplay. He's not in there. Where's he? In Jolly Joe's orifice? Well, I'm not going to check. Him. You got that right. Way down in Jamaica in the Caribbean, they got the best herb that you ever seen. Ask anybody in that neighborhood. They tell you this the country where the ganja be good. Rasta man has some he want to sell. And from a mile away, you can detect the smell. Oh, my God. He light up the spliff and choke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. Smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. The ganja be good. You can carry lots of herb in the gunny sack. Smoke it every day until your lungs turn black. With all the money that we have made, Jamaica doesn't need any foreign aid. American tourists come here and say, got nothing like this in the USA. They smoke, smoke, ganja, smoke, smoke. They light up the spliff and talk. They begin to cough and choke. Smoke, ganja, smoke. Smoke, you fail. The ganja be good. Doi, 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 doi. Mama tell her son you are an awesome man. You like to smoke the giant spliff whenever you can. Many people coming here from miles around to buy the herb for you by the ounce and the pound. Rasta man say to her, Mama, you're right. The ganja be good tonight. at 560. Let's get Johnny in to be the sidekick on the show and spice things up a little bit, huh? Sure. With his riveting personality. It's 72 along the coast. I think that that stinted kiss pushed him over the edge, you know? Over uh, which edge? Over onto the dark side? Preacher Rowe is dead. I think we talked about this, didn't we? Who? 
Well, you wouldn't know because you don't know who that is, and Fatso wouldn't know because he's never on the show. They what? Preacher Rowe. Did I mention this yesterday? I think so. Well, that's right. Flea was there. Yeah, he didn't know who it was either. He's goofball. Elwin Charles Preacher Rowe, the cunning left-handed pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the late 40s, early 50s, who was selected to four consecutive All-Star teams, died Sunday of colon cancer in West Plains, Missouri, according to the Dodgers' website. He was 92, plenty old enough. Oh, 92. Armed with an array of off-speed pitches, including the occasional illegal spitball that he later confessed to throwing. See, that's why he croaked. The Lord, the Lord smote him for throwing those illegal spitters. Wouldn't you think? Absolutely. Oh, I'm Roque sorry. Confounded Absolutely. hitters winning 93 games, losing 37 for the Dodgers, which were good enough to make it to the World Series, but usually lost to the Yankees. That's correct. Roe pitched for the Dodgers in three World Series, 1949, 52, and 53, shutting out the Yankees, 1-0 in 1949, his only World Series victory. By the time Brooklyn won his first World Series, beating the Yankees in 55, Roe had retired. Oh, gee. See, he retired too soon. There's nothing worse than retiring too soon. Talking about the spitball, he said, for Roe, the illusion of loading the ball was often enough to psych the hitter. He said, I had a wet one and three fake wet ones, he said. <laughs> oh, I got a great line for that, but I better not use it. Oh, come on. Not time to retire. Not quite yet. I don't see any follow-up, by the way, from uh, Goofball from Hallandale. Wouldn't you think there'd be like a lengthy follow-up, the fact that I read all that swill on the air? Now, Brandon sent me a picture of something that didn't, it didn't, uh, says, here's a treat, and it's just uh, a little... A little red uh, X in a little box, and there's nothing. Didn't show up, Brandon. Said it again, or not. Ian says, Les Paul was the first to overdub with a guitar. I believe one of the first to get the most out of an electric guitar. That's correct. He got the most out of it. He twanged it. The World is Waiting for a Sunrise was their best, and Mary Ford also overdubbed her voice. Still a great track. By the way, we're still waiting for the sunrise. Yeah, me too. It's murky. Just drove down to Pompano from Hamilton. Now I can listen live. Took the auto train. Saved driving 900 miles. Nine hours to Toronto to London, Virginia. Lorton, Virginia, which is Washington. Got off the train with the car in Sanford. Three hours. Jumped to the Acres, Carol and Ian. What, what does that mean? Don't know. Oh, Sanford, Florida. Three hours to the Acres. Oh, Carol and Ian are in the Acres. A lot of Les Paul and Mary Ford talk. We must have a lot of old people listening. Of course, I jumped on that Obama bandwagon to, you know, lure the young crowd. <laughs> Guess what, loser, Lucas, whatever your name was. Uh, people under the age of 100 don't listen to AM radio. They don't care about your politics. They don't care about anything. They don't listen to AM radio. They don't even know what the hell it is. Am I right? Right. In fact, a lot of them don't even listen to FM radio anymore. Radio is done. I told you that a long time ago. But as long as I can still keep getting big checks every couple of weeks, why the hell not take it? I can use it. Mm -hmm. I can find something useful to do with it. I can go to Woodbine this afternoon at 2 o'clock, which I'm going to do. Just out of spite to Lucas, I'm going to go there and win a zillion dollars just to piss you off, Lucas. You phony, you fake, Terry, Lucas, all Dan from Maryland, I'm sure. In fact, you know, I never did read the last email I got from Dan from Maryland. I read it to you yesterday before the show, I think, didn't I? Yeah. Tragic. Tragic. And this is somebody who was the same thing, back and forth and back and forth, hated, hated, loved. Well, where the hell is it? I wasn't going to read it. Yeah, here it is. This is Daniel Nolte, not Nick Nolte. You know, he switches back and forth. After you block one, then mm -hmm. he comes up with the other one. This was on Saturday, November 1th. Subject, personal. Hi, Neil. And, and let's keep in mind, this is somebody who's been sending me these hateful, the, the same stuff as Lucas. Oh, and you used to be great. You don't have the balls to do this. And why didn't you go to XM? And blah, 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 you know, like that. Hi, Neil. I've emailed you a couple of times, but I'm really Dan from Maryland. Just wanted to tell you that I ripped you before you stated the show is what it is now, and that's all it's going to be forever. I have thought about this and the fact that you're 65, not 45. I understand more now why you didn't go to XM. When the Beasleys and Joyce stopped you from what you can say and not say. I didn't go to XM because they didn't offer me any money. They didn't want me then. They don't want me now. Sirius didn't want me then. They didn't want me now in spite of the crap that Howard was spewing. I didn't go anywhere. You just don't pick up your microphone and go wherever the hell you want, Dan. And here comes the coupe de grass. Keep in mind, I don't know this guy from Adam. 
He's just been exchanging a lot of mostly hostile emails. It's just I have lost so much in my life like all of us, like my wife in a car accident in 1989, favorite things that will never be replaced, like the Cherry Hill Arena where I played, uh, the Cherry Hill area where I played hockey, and the Flyers practiced there, and the Latin Casino in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Also, I sat next to Ali there when I was 18 years old. He had a house in Cherry Hill at one time. All the acts I saw at Gulfstream during the winter on Saturday afternoons during the winter, like Grand Funk Railroad, Michael McDonald, Eric Burton, etc. Now, what, what does that have to do with me? He's had loss in his life. Haven't we all had loss in our lives if you live long enough? Yeah. So what, what the hell has that got to do with taking it out on me? Leaving November 24th for Damaget in the Philippines, if you want to see where I'm going to live, and then he sends me a, a picture. Cost just six grand a year to rent on the beach. Check it out. Going to live with my new girlfriend and her baby from a previous relationship. We'll send you a picture of her in a separate email. And here comes the best of all. Still listen, because there's nothing like your show anywhere. As usual, thanks for all the great years. We'll still listen on the stream from Demoget, or whatever how you pronounce that. Regards, Dan. Regards, Dan from Maryland, who now is back to being Dan Nolte. Not Nick Nolte, Daniel Nolte. He's had a lot of loss in his life, so, so obviously it must, must be my fault. Take it out on me, Dan. Take your best shot. Sports Radio 5. Mania. The fourth leader. Neil God. Absolutely. Ninety-six miles across the sea to the sandy beaches of Miami. That's all it takes to reach it. Say the Taliban. Escape plans, escape plans, escape plans. Took away the rat that was on our head. Now we have to use toilet paper instead. Escape into Miami, next target of attack. A tropical paradise loaded with apathy is where Al-Qaeda should be. They're serving us iced tea and Perrier, but we'd really rather drink our tea. <laughs> Slash a few throats and seize a boat. Pointed towards Miami and off we go to where the angry Cubans slaughter their goats and attack, 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 attack. That's our plan, escape plan, escape plan, escape plan. The plan is our plan, escape plan. So let me ask you, what do you think is more effective, nailing a goat or a chicken to the door frame or a mezuzah? Uh, why, why, do, why do either huh? one? I mean, why not do both? Hedge your bets. That's a good idea, yeah. In fact, you could put a mezuzah in the chicken's mouth. Or the Excellent. Goat. Here's the way the poll is shaping up so far, the brand new one, the new uh, spiffy one. Oh, you're mailing it in, Neil. You don't even have the decency to live here with us. Better you than me, that's all I can tell you. You stay there, I'll stay here. Even through all the snow and the ice and the minus 20 degrees, I'll stay here. I could least tolerate an insult to my blank. Intelligence, 37. Penis size, 15. Family, 14. Spouse, 12. Weight, 11. Mama, 10. Yeah. Save the drama for your mama. Performance in bed, 8. Political preferences, 6. Line of work, 5. Gang, 4. Beer preference, 4. Disability, 3. Ethnicity or race, 3. Income level, 2. Gender, 2. School or college, 2. As in MSU. Sports team preference, two. Choice of car I drive, two. Don't be knocking the vet. If you can't afford one, don't knock it. Looks, two. Taste in men or women, one. Native language, one. Like Incredible. height, one. Religion, one. None yet, four. State or region, native country, fashion style, breast size, sexual persuasion or name. Yeah, don't be knocking my name, real or fake. Oh, God. That's right. I can't handle it. Now, here's an interesting one. This is the most interesting one of all. You want to know why? Why? Because it's not on Neil at NeilRogers.com, our show email address. Okay. It's at my Yahoo email. Okay. From Jim. This, this is definitely a Joe Bell job. It says, Neil, I've listened for years. Must say I missed the calls. Are you planning on bringing them back soon? No. We took calls yesterday. A few, right? Mm -hmm. We took enough. Sure. In fact, if we had one on there right now, let me look. No, there's nothing on there right now. I tried to get out to Calder when you were there earlier this year. You see, there's the, there's the decoy mistake, because it was Gulfstream, not Calder, but was unable to make it. I hope you do another appearance here soon. No. 
And maybe I could see Fat Chris and Jolly Joe. That would be worth driving out for, says Jim, on my Yahoo email. Definitely from Jolly Joe Bell. Am I correct? I, I imagine. Must say I missed the calls. Are you planning on bringing them back soon? Uh, no. No, I'm not, Jolly Joe. And in part, much thanks to you in large part. How do you like that for a bunch of communist crap? I don't see any calls coming in on there. I would I would punch up a couple to make Joe happy. You know? Joe well, let's, uh, let's, let's set some up. Let me run around the building here. Yeah, that's right. That's a good idea. Get jerks to make some calls. And write out the script while you're at it. The fake Greg Budell wants to know, did Dave Hagen work at WQM? Yes, he did, as a matter of fact. And I guess Greg must be writing a book. He's writing his memoirs, even though Greg never worked at QAM. He did work at uh, Waxy, the original Waxy FM, 105.9. Greg Budell, he failed there. He failed on, what What else was he on? He was on um, Love, Gloves 94. In fact, he failed pretty much everywhere he was. The public hates you, Greg. I hate to break the news to you. I don't want you to feel bad about it. But the public hates you like poison. WQAM, hello. Hi, could you give me the phone number to your uh, pro shop? To our what? Pro shop. Pro shop? Yeah. yeah. What are you babbling about, sir? Babbling? What are you Emily, yeah. Of an idiot? yeah it's a, Emily goes good in your... Rectum. Try smearing some in there. WQAM, hello. Uh, the only Les Paul song I remember is How High the Moon. Is, uh, you ever hear that one? Yeah, sure. How high the moon, how low you're... Uh, yeah. Right, whatever. So, okay. that's all I got. Whatever is the uh, definitive uh, word. Whatever. Well, there you go. There's some calls for you, Joe. I love the way the audience wants to hear Neil interact with the callers. That, and that, that's Joe's way of trying to encourage me to take some calls, you know, as opposed to saying, why don't you take some calls, Neil? Ho, ho, ho. Probably Flea is the one who uh, put Joe up to, you know, sending the fake email. WQAM, hello. Sir, there's a hurricane coming down here. Die. Oh, die, die. Wow. Okay, yeah, he's back. Crazy Mario. Sir, there's a hurricane coming. Sir. Get some new material, you loser. Go nail a dead chicken to your door, okay? Or just go nail your head to the door. Better idea. Michael says, you can't do fart jokes, but Joe Scarborough can drop the F-bomb and apologize, and that's it. They go nuts over Janet Jackson's tenth of a second wardrobe move, and now this is going to be glossed over. They should be joiced for being what a hypocrite looks like in the mirror. Uh, loyal listener, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Michael's got no complaints. Unlike Jolly Joe and Lester in uh, Hallandale, whatever his name was. What was his name? Lucas. Oh. Lucas. Not to be confused Lupus. with Levi. Not to be confused with Levi, the future uh, son-in-law of uh, Sarah Palin. Not. He was going to be the future son-in-law. Then they got walloped in the election. And what's all this crap with the McCain people ripping her an ass? Aren't they the ones who picked her? Right. Well, we don't know what's going on there. What do you mean by that? It's like nobody's owning up to it. Somebody said something, and then everybody's like, oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, sure. Sure. WQAM, hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. I don't have much material. I'd like to say that... WQAM, hello. Hey, wonderful program. Mm-hmm. There they are, side by each. Jolly Joe's prizes. I wouldn't be surprised if he hangs out with them, too. Well, you know, on days when Fat Chris is otherwise occupied, hangs out with the fearsome foursome, you know. I'm your friend. Hi, Ron. And then, of course, uh, those two. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. What do you think of the Marlins trade? I don't. Why not? I don't care. It's a baseball town. I don't care. Oh, it's a baseball town. Is that why they have the lowest attendance in a major league? Because it's a baseball town? Oh, my God. It's a baseball town, my ass. Crazy person. Yeah, it's a baseball town. You should live so long. In fact, I got the article way down in my pile, way down in there, in Miami and Miami Day to vote again for the Marlins Stadium. Sure, the fix is in. They'll spend your tax money on it, in spite of the fact they know overwhelmingly the public don't want any part of that, but they'll spend your tax money on it. And they'll build them another new white elephant, and, oh, hey, it's going to be the greatest thing. Yeah, by the Orange Bowl. Anybody want to go where the Orange Bowl was? No. No. Anybody interested in the Marlins? No. Anybody want to go to a baseball game in South Florida? No. No. Even though they had a much better season than anticipated than anybody could have ever dreamed for, uh, still nobody showed up. In fact, I'd say Georgia's interest in the Marlins is about average of what it is in South Florida. Wow. Right. Well, that, I that's think that's a statement down. Well. Uh-oh. 
Conseco apologized, gets probation for a drug charge. Boy, he's got issues, Jose, in spite of what Rosanna uh, Ileana keeps licking his ass. Jose Conseco went to a Tijuana pharmacy looking for something to boost his testosterone level after years of admitted steroid use and got himself in trouble again, limping slightly and saying he's tired, depressed, and nearly bankrupt. The former slugger pleaded guilty today to a misdemeanor offense of trying to bring a fertility drug across the Mexican border. He was sentenced to one... Uh, sentenced to 12 months of unsupervised probation. The 44-year-old Conseco apologized to U.S. Magistrate Judge Reuben Brooks, saying, I made an honest mistake, as opposed to a dishonest mistake, you know. Brooks wondered aloud whether to make uh, community service and drug testing conditions of Conseco's sentence. The judge decided against those stipulations after Attorney Greg Emerson said Conseco was dealing with physical difficulties due to his steroid use, and he's doing his best to turn his life around. Yeah, turn it around, Jose. It was ignorance on my part, is all it was, Conseco told AP. Conseco, who also said he's got a bum knee, faced a maximum sentence of one year in prison and a maximum fine of a grand. The former star was ordered to pay $25 special assessment. Twenty-five bucks. Maybe Ileana will pay it for him. Oh, and it goes on and on. It's long and ponderous. Once a, a scum bucket, always a scum bucket. <laughs> The biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. The biggest names. The best talent. It's the big dog, Joe Rose. <laughs> Weekday morning, 7 to 10. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. <laughs> Eleven forty-five at five sixty WQAM. Boy, Thursday we got. Uh, now, how come they couldn't start the pregame festivities at noon on Thursday? I'm sorry. What the hell's wrong with you? What do you mean you're sorry? What do you got to do with it? Where's George? Know. Right here. What? Oh, well, don't you think that would be a great idea? I mean, the game starts at seven thirty. Yeah. I think seven and a half hours of pregame festivities would be no. perfect for the Canes, don't no. you? Do you think that's enough, though? Well, they've already got the five and a half hours. Started. They moved it up to two o'clock. Hurricanes game day special with or big O two to three thirty. So they've tacked on an extra hour and a half with his show, and then three thirty they got Hurricanes game day, and then UM will lose to Virginia Tech Thursday night, and then followed by Hurricanes extra point. Wow, all the Canes all the time on Thursday. I bet you Clarence and uh, the Beast are going to really be doing it. The hurricane fucking blow. Oh, speaking of doing it, I got one from the fake Joyce. <coughs> Joyce Fitch, warning. Mr. Rogers, I've been getting some pla complaints about you, Neil. Apparently, there's been some explicit references to gay sex and Hershey highways on your show lately. I guess uh, maybe Joyce has never been through Pennsylvania. This is unacceptable discussion for the air, Neil. I'm also hearing that there have been references of Joe Bell and Chris Whalen having sex. Joe Bell is a big wig at the station, Neil, and we will not have these slanderous remarks about him going out on the air. These types of comments make the station look very bad, and this is not good. If you'd like to continue your employment at WQM, this needs to stop. I cannot have any remarks about cornholes, Hershey highways, man sticks, bloody anuses, or pimply asses. This needs to stop or face the consequences. Signed, Ms. Joyce Fitch. <laughs> oh, woo! How do you like that? A rat. I guess she told me a thing or two. Here's one from the fake Howard David. Neil, I hate you. I've been fired from my lucrative career. On, uh, wait a minute, let me start again. Neil, I hate you. Do, 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 do. I left that out. I've been fired from my lucrative career on satellite radio. It's all your fault. 
They told me my toupee smells like cat crap. They also claim I had lice in my toupee. You totally destroyed my reputation, Neil. Because of you, I can't get a job. Everywhere I go, people ask me why I stole your pizza. I hate you, Neil. You're going to burn in hell, you faggot. Signed, Howard. And then he says, doit, 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 doit. Just for good measure. In case I missed the first one. Mr. Radio is back. Boy, just when you, th you thought you got rid of the uh, lowest slime on the face of the globe, I'd rather hear from the fake Mo any day than Mr. Radio, who's sucking around, you know. What's with these people? You didn't kill the show. The jackass callers and WQM management did. It's funny that all these people hate your show, but they listen and email every day. I still love your show, although I'd like to hear you on a station that's got a real living and breathing people on it. It'd be great to have you on Sirius or XM. I find it hard to believe they don't want you as you claim. Most people in the industry respect you as I claim. No, they want me. They want to pay me $10 million a year. I'm just more happy to sit here and work for Joe Bell with the prospect of starting January 1, working for food stamps. No more dolphin tickets, no more hockey tickets, no more any uh, speeding tickets, no more nothing. Anything that he could cut. And, of course, George, he gave a big 3% raise and promised all kinds of strenuous sales efforts to make George more money. And, of mm -hmm. course, our names don't even come up in a sales meeting. No, nope, not at all. Not even, penalty, not even as jokes, you know, not even cracking Under penalty jokes. of death, if anybody mentions our name in a sales meeting on this station, they immediately get shot. Or even worse than that, sent across the street like Miguel. How's he doing, by the way? You hear from Miguel? Every once in a while. Is he doing okay over there with all those losers? He's fine. Well, I know that. Well, he used to be anyway. <laughs> then he got married and all kinds of stuff happened. You know, uh -huh. you know how that goes. I do. Guys get married and that's the end of their life. All you guys out there, young guys, if we have any, which I doubt. I tried. Don't get I begged him, man. Nobody wants to listen to me. No. Well, what do you know? Exactly. Anyway, here's more of that story about the um, two people got shot in dispute. We had a little bit yesterday, but whoever emailed it to me, like... Uh, emailed around the edges. You know what I mean? In other words, the meat of the story wasn't there. Yeah. This is football in the Deep South, baby, in the USA. Mobile, Alabama. Witnesses said a man and his former wife were shot to death over an argument about the Alabama-Louisiana State football game, though a spokesman for the slain family disputed that Monday. The slain man's family. Basing it on this ball game is totally false, said Shannon Odom, half-brother of Dennis James Smith. Dennis James, Okay. 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 He's dead. What a shame. He okay. was a good guy. He was a good guy. He was like a game show host, and he was like a spokesman for Kellogg's. And Now, you don't hate Kellogg's, do you? No, no, not at all. From Battle Creek, Michigan. Absolutely. Anybody says Battle Creek. I bet you Johnny Dark says Battle Creek. I knew a girl from Battle Creek. Got to send Johnny Dark up the creek. Hey, Johnny, you loser. Smith, 41, and Donna K. Hall, Smith, 39, were shot to death about 7 p.m. Saturday in the rural community of Owasso in southern Alabama. I know there's Owasso, Michigan. I know Owasso. This is Owasso. The Conakry County Sheriff's Office said the two divorced about five years ago. Recently, they've gotten back together. We're planning to remarry, Odom said. I guess that won't happen. Maybe they'll meet in heaven or in hell. Michael Williams, 28, was charged with two counts of murder in the shooting at his home when he and others watched the game. He was being held Monday without bond, and a sheriff's investigator didn't know if he had an attorney. People at Williams' home said the dispute was over the game, which Alabama won in overtime, 27-21. Witnesses said Williams was an Alabama fan, and Dennis Smith rooted for LSU, but Odom disputed that, describing Smith as an adamant Tide fan. The Crimson Tide. Adamant. My team's better than your team. Yeah, why don't we have that, chicken neck, to the tune of my religion's better than yours? My team's better than yours. What do you think? All right, why not? Odom said the problem may have been between Smith and a co-worker of his who related to Williams and was at Williams' home Saturday. Authorities also said Donna Smith was related to Williams' girlfriend. I think there's more to it than just the ball game. Conakry Sheriff uh, Edwin Booker said we're still investigating. An investigator said booze may have been a factor. Oh, not booze in ball games. Oh, no. Never heard of that. According to witnesses, Dennis Smith called Williams after the game, and the Smiths went to Williams' home where a fight led to the shooting. Dennis Smith had a pistola, and Williams had a shotgun, authorities said. In the phone call, someone reportedly said Alabama just got lucky. LSU should have won. But it wasn't clear who said it. Booker said Smith jumped out of his truck and hit Williams. Odom said the Smiths were driving to another town to visit a family member. He didn't know why they stopped at Williams' home. He said Donna Smith had just called her mother to talk about the game. Everything was cool. He said, next thing we know, they're dead. They're dead. Not Broward. Broward. They're Dade. That's Miami Dade, of course. Oh, Brandon had sent this to me earlier, and it was a, a big news story, I guess. Sent it to me before the show, 817 this morning. Here it is, almost noon, and I forgot all about it. Well, it's down in my pod. You know, i got a growing pile. 
Like that bleeding hemorrhoid that the uh, Dr. Al sent about yesterday. Remember that? I and Joyce, mm -hmm. by the way, you left that thing about the bleeding hemorrhoid exploding off your list of complaints. We just got the license back, honey. Just relax. Brandon says, Sky 12 made a hard landing this morning after losing power around 6.20 a.m. The chopper landed safely on its belly, like Fat Chris, just east of I-95 near Boynton Beach Boulevard. This is from WPEC-TV and WFTL-AM. It says, both our traffic reporter, Paul Cavanaugh, and the pilot escaped serious injury. They were transported to Bethesda Memorial Hospital, where they're being treated for minor injuries. The chopper crashed. The pilot landed after getting a warning light looking for a safe place to land. The landing gear in the chopper was damaged. Tail of the chopper was also split in half, but the main section of the chopper is still intact. Our best wishes are with our partners for a speedy recovery. It says we'll keep you posted. From Channel 12 and um, WFTL 850. Nobody knows the call letters because there's 15 different WFTLs. Nice going over there, James Crystal Radio. That's the kind of radio that Norma can't want to get me into. The big time, man. 850. 1970 on the dial, stuff like that. Laura says, I'm sure you watched KO last night. No, I did not. Meaning Keith Olbermann? Yeah. I was very moved. I hope you were too. I wasn't moved because I didn't watch it. I'm wondering if uh, you could have Eric posted somewhere on your website so other people could watch it. No. I've sent an email links to my friends. I listen to your show, obviously. I won't attach it here, but you can find it at msnbc.com. Oh, if you want to see Olbermann's show, whichever one she's talking about, msnbc.com. On another note, please don't get rid of Chris. Despite what you said yesterday, I think you should reconsider. I work seven days a week, get weekends off every 15 days. All I do on my weekends is sleep. Thanks for your time. Hugs, Laura. P.S. to Chris. Hold on there. you got fans out there. you got fans out there, Chris. Laura. Well, thank you, Laura. Maybe Laura's got the hots for fat Chris. Maybe she saw that lovely picture on our website, the old slop hog picture. Maybe she's got you confused with Jolly Joe. No. Maybe Jolly Joe gave out my Yahoo email address to another, some another anonymous listener. Wouldn't surprise me. Anybody dumb enough to give out my email address uh, to that other guy? Remember that? Yep. yep. That's Jolly Joe for you. Ho, ho, ho! I thought you wanted to talk to your fans, Neil. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> yeah, he may not be good, but at least he's consistent. Two years of misery, two years of failure, two years of butchery, two years of misery. And by the way, to those of you people who send me um, emails about PSAs, they must be talking about the uh, streaming. Okay. I don't oh, have any idea. Oh, what? yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Well, that's what they're referring to. We don't have any PSAs on this show. No. And and even if we did, why why if you listen to a show, why do you care what the commercials are? I oh, mean, obviously oh, hey. we hope people listen to them and uh, you know patronize our wonderful sponsors. Remember who you're talking about? These uh, these lifeless nitpickers out there. I mean, oh, I have no life. You mean like uh, what's his name in Hallandale who never That's followed right. up on that on that fantastic first email, Lucas? I guess I guess he got it all out of his system, or maybe he's not listening anymore, huh? Bye, Lucas. <laughs> no, no chance. It's like the thing with the phone. You could you could go you could turn the phone off for like six years, not take a single call. And just like uh, it was either yesterday or whatever the hell, maybe it was on when you were on vacation. The very first call. Hi, Ron. Remember that, Fat Chris? Yep. Hi, Ron. The biggest names, the best talent. Why? You're listening to Sports Radio 560 WQAM. Miami, Miami Fort Lauderdale. This is Brady Quinn. Whenever I shave my balls, I listen to the Neil Rogers 12 to 1 hour. Next year we'll have more luck. I can see it now. I bet they'll cure Matt Cow. Might even fight a cure for that guy Michael Moore. When you fill your SUV, that gas will all be free. Even when Bush cuts our taxes, deficits will still go down. Dan Rather will not use faxes. Osama will be found. I know there will be peace throughout the Middle East. All kids will graduate in queer eyes. Oh, 
Oh, my God. I got the best email of the day. I'm printing it out right now. All a right. real one. A real one uh, from your close person. Get out. Buddy. I don't believe you. What? A real email? No, it's short and to the point. It's from your close, uptight personal friend, Jolly Joe Bell, who obviously sits in his orifice and listens all day. Well, that makes one person in the building. Yeah. Oh, and it, it didn't print, so I guess I'll have to go back to it. Damn it. Basically, he's protesting. I didn't give out your email address or yada, yada, yada to anybody, but if you want me to, et cetera, and so on. <laughs> yeah, how do you like that? Is that incredible? Talk about uptight. How do you know it's the real one? Inbox. Here it is. Joe Bell. Blame someone else. I have not given your email address, your phone number, or anything else out to anyone, but I will if you want me to. Joe Bell. It's the real Joe Bell on my Hotmail. How do you like that? Real uptight and defensive. I don't know what that's all about. Wow. I guess Chris must be getting to him. Are you putting a little bit too much pressure on old Jolly Joe? Is that it? Say what? Wow. Don't you think that's like a little bit of an overreaction? He did give out my email address. We all know that. Everybody was ear witness to that. That was months ago, though. I think he learned his lesson. Or not, as the case may be. Who the hell cares? Johnny Dork says, the real one, retire! Neil, what's your problem with me? You're an idiot, that's why. You're an a-hole. I'm not a racist. Just tell it like it is like you used to. I don't believe you for a second. You're just scared to make the change. I know Nick Charles wanted you at Clear Channel. Nick Charles isn't the guy. It's Ken Charles, okay? Nick Charles at Clear Channel, as did other stations. Wrong. Also, Scott Farrell claims Howard would have you on his station. You just don't return calls or email on your Yahoo email. <laughs> You're just old, tired, and lazy. That's it, Johnny. I'm old, tired, and lazy, and I love my good buddy Joe Bell. I love working for Uptight Joe. I didn't give your email address up. But I will if you want me to. Go away, Joe. Go do something constructive. Wait a minute. This must be the same thing. Yeah, here it is. You hear it? Blame someone else. I have not given your email address, your phone number, or anything else, but I will if you want me to. El Paso, Joe. Just go away. Go to lunch. Maybe you and Joe could go have a good lunch. Chris. That's okay. George. I'll take it. Again. Yeah, you can go have a good lunch, and you can renegotiate your deal. You can get like 3.2%. Anyway, speaking of Dave Hagen, uh, the fake Greg Budell is obsessed with Dave Hagen for whatever reason. He was a good guy. You want to know where he is now? Dave Hagen? Yeah. Isn't he like in New York or something? He's on Sirius NFL Radio now. Oh, how do you like that? Everybody's on Sirius. It's like everybody used to be on ESPN. Now they're all on Sirius XM. Dave can give you the spy report on Mo getting canned from late hits. The co-host couldn't stand him, it says. I don't understand that. Do, 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 do. He was so popular at QAM, everybody just loved do, do, the do, Mo do, Man. Do. Even uh, Joe Bell loved the Mo Man. And Greg, remember how Greg loved the Mo Man? I remember one time Greg in the parking lot said to me, what are we going to do about Howard? Meaning, how are we going to get rid of him? And I just kind of like chuckled. I went like, <laughs> kind of like that. Isn't it great to know that Jolly Joe listens to every minute of the show every day? I'm delighted. Are you pleased? Again, besides the those of us in the studio here. Yeah. That makes one. Well, here's another one from the fake Barney Frank. This is a follow-up to the one last week. I like follow-ups. Unlike Lucas from Hallandale, who didn't have the balls to follow up his first scathing emails telling me to step aside. Step aside, Neil. It's time to step down. You've lost a step. Schlep. Hi, Neil. This is Senator Barney Frank. I wanted to check in and see if you've taken any time to consider my offer from last week. I've been masturbating to that sexy picture of you on the website for the last week and dreaming of, dreaming of how much a fun couple of commie pinko liberals like us could have together. I need a sexy beast of a man like you in my life. I'm so lonely now that my boyfriend has left me. I have a lot of money, Neil. I could make you very happy. I'd love to fly you and your sidekick, George, here to Massachusetts. I can set up George in a nice hotel, provide him with some of the best weed the U.S. has to offer, and you can enjoy some dinners at taxpayers' expense. We can go back to my place. I can make you feel like a real man. Like I said last time, I have a very tight and clean sphincter. Now, Joyce didn't say anything about sphincter, did she, in that memo? No. No, not yet. I've been told that my ass is very tight and warm. Please, Neil, consider my proposition. You'll never find a man like me, Neil. Please contact me, Representative Barney Fag Frank. Wow. Palin says God will show her the way to the White House. 
Maybe God will show her the way to the tea room. Oh, I've got just tons of stuff here. Although I think we probably should take some calls. Don't you? Absolutely. WQAM, hello. Hello? Hello? Hello, Neil. It's the fake lifeguard with the fake British accent, yes. Neil, I was wondering... It's the fake Maxwell Potts. No, Bill... You yeah, know how, how long have you been working on this one, okay, since you're we talked talk the last time? You've been working on this phony God. accent? Is that how long you've been working you on it? <laughs> Boy, they are testy today. Maybe that must have been Joe doing a voice, do you think? I didn't give your email address. I, I was just joking about that, but boy, he gets really testy. Does he? He, he wasn't I think testy's about on that. that list, by the way. You can't say that. Oh. Now, the, the stuff that comes in that looks like Chinese, that's from um, Macintosh, from Mac, is back. Okay. Now, the, the emails that come in, like, in that unintelligible script, somebody was saying to me that that's probably sent by a Mac, and it's not compatible. The Dow's down 271, by the way. What about Captain and Schlemiel, says Michelle. Well, that pull is already gone, honey, gone. Oh, and look at that. Brandon sends me a picture. Brandon, you bastard. A picture of my favorite mushroom Swiss from Hardee's. And the picture looks good enough to eat. God. Yeah, he's, he's back into that thing of sending me food pictures again today. Trying to kill me. Here's the fake Adam Kirshner. What happened to all your live reads? It sounds like you have two accounts now. Do the salespeople not sell your show? That's correct. They don't even talk about our show during the uh, sales meetings. We're, we're uh, off, off limits. What happened to Tom Denenberg and Fat Boy? Tom, why, why would you lump them in together? Tom Denenberg's a good guy. Fat boy is what he is. Walking turd. What happened to all the sponsors you had on WNWS, WYNZ, and WIOD? Yada, yada, yada. Says Adam, uh, the fake Adam Kirshner, who's very concerned about it. I'm not. Not until January, anyway. Hi, Neil. Les Paul still plays every Monday night at the Iridium Theater in Times Square. Never saw him. He's in his 90s now, and he's, I hear he still jams, says David. The NHL needs to get rid of the shootout. It's a waste. I agree with that. Heading to Florida this weekend for a football palooza. Gators and Gamecocks on Saturday in the Swamp. Then my beloved Raiders against the Dolphins. Oh, beloved Raiders. Is that who they play this week, the Raiders? Correct. What kind of a schedule have they got? My God. Are they ever going to play a real team? And I know they play the uh, Patriots again. Like I said, are they ever going to play a real team? Dow's down almost 300 points. Tell Fat Chris will be tailgating in W22. Alan Dresner's alive and living in Thailand. I'll have to email him and tell him to stay away from that guy from Maryland. Yeah, stay away from Dan from Maryland, Alan. He's a lunatic. But he's had some loss in his life. Yeah, that's what I would do every time I have loss in my life. I'd take it out on some radio talk show guy. I send him a bunch of hostile emails. Bah! Retire! Bah! Yeah, like that. What a maniac. And in closing, there's a cigar shop downstairs in my building with one of the cigar store engines. I find myself saying engine killer every time I see it. I thought he was going to say something about Bo Camper. Your show is great. and Keep on doing it and the show, too. Your friend, New York City Dave. He says, go Gators and long live the Raider Nation. They couldn't beat a little girls team of blind kids. Are you kidding me? The Raiders. Neil, would it kill you to take a caller once in a while? Like the fake Brit? Jeez. You're so... What does it say? I don't know. Like you're so GD busy, says Andrew. We just, didn't we just get through taking a few calls? Just now? Yeah. And yeah, it would kill me. Okay, they suck. They blow the fake Brit. Same old tired routine. The same four lunatics, losers. And they're probably sitting in the conference room with Jolly Joe. He may not be giving out the email address, but I'm sure he's, he's uh, you know, orchestrating. He's engineering. He's the pivot man in that group. WQAM, hello. See? Kills me to take these damn calls. They suck. WQAM, hello. Do you think George roller skating will lead to the Gangers? WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to our world at WQAM 560 on your AM dial. All right. Hey, my friend wants to talk to you. Hi, Neil. What's your show all about? I don't even understand. WQAM, hello. Yeah, Neil. Even Edgar Bergen did better than that. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Yeah, I just uh, I just wanted to say uh, congratulations to uh, President Obama mm -hmm. for becoming the new elected president. Yeah. Um. 
I'm, I'm, sure I'm glad they took over instead of McCain because uh, if McCain was still out there, you know, he would have kept killing, you know, the Muslim people over there in Iraq. And, um, and the yeah, because I'm, I'm Muslim. And, yeah. you know, are you, are, you, I hate, are, you a, I hate, are you a terrorist? No, I'm definitely not a terrorist. That's for You're sure. sure now. <laughs> no, Islam doesn't teach terrorism. No. Oh. That's just fundamentalist. Like fundamentalist Christians. Like fundamentalist Christians, like fundamentalist Jews. No, nah, fundamentalist Jews don't kill anybody, not yet. That doesn't oh, make they've any killed sense. a lot of they people don't. there in Palestine. They have. Just Arabs. Oh, they Just don't Palestinians. count. Palestinians. They don't count. They're animals anyway. Okay, well, Zyga pal. Keep it halal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, see ya. Don't be eating any trafe now. Come on. See, that's the amazing part of it is that the Jews and the Arabs have got so much in common, and yet they're always trying to kill each other. That's because the Lord told them to do it. There's no food God feud like to a do family it, man. feud. Neil, God. What? There's no feud like a family feud. That's right. It's the family feud, the Jews and the Arabs. All the children of Abraham at each that's other's throats. That's right. Abraham Solomon, my grandpa. 229 votes on our second poll. Not too shabby. What did we get on the first one, Tubby? Almost 1,000. We are kicking big, sweaty, smelly ass in spite of Joe Bell's obsession with the phone calls. 896. The biggest name. Wow. The best talent. Woo. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. The biggest names. The best the talent. Best talent. It's the Mad Dog. Woo. Jim Mandich. Afternoons 4 to 7. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. I'm Mark Morgan. Now here's Neil Rogers on 560 QAM. Way down south, where the mug wants go to hang from trees and play banjo. You got some who own a station on newfangled radio. <laughs> now as North Carolina goes, Raleigh's a big city, you know, and that's where the Beasleys had to go for Jolly Riley Jones. Uh -huh. A new GM, he'll do what he can. Shake your hand like a friend, then quickly walk away. They had Joe go to 560 with ratings in the toilet bowl yeah. to get those flaming sport homos in order and control. And then so Jolly Rolly Joe, a buckular and in the know, he lets Mo go and here's what blows, gives Geldy his own show. He'll make a big change and rearrange. It's worse or the same. He hasn't done a thing. For what goes on the air at two, Joe don't have a stinking clue about a poor not that essentially blows sport all radio. Yes. The GM of 560, Jolly Raleigh Joe. Now here's an excellent email about Jolly Joe from uh, Rocky. He says, maybe Joe could take some time from emailing you and take some of the money he's stealing from the Beasleys and fix the signal. Yeah, hey, drive out to the tower and uh, pee on the tower, Joe. Go fix the signal. It says, I'm in Coconut Creek and the signal has so much static, it's unlistenable. Let me say it again. Unlistenable. Sorry, Rocky. Maybe Joe during his lunch break will go out there and pee on the tower. We can only hope. And, of course, if he does that, I bet you Chris will probably want to go out and lend him a hand. Right? Sure. Why not? Here's one from Ramel who says, Why is it that fat old men like stuffing themselves in small cars like fat black girls wearing spandex? I didn't know that fat old men had small cars. Would you consider my car a small car? No. Then what does that mean? It's not small. No, I know not the vet is not small. It's just, uh, you know, just right. Not too big, not too small, not too hot, not too cold. It's just right. It's, uh... All oh, right. Yeah. Cliff Jean, J-E-A-N. Isn't that how you'd say it, like a Haitian name, maybe? Yes. Cliff Jean says, hey, Neil, I just wanted to say keep up the good work. Keep making us laugh and tell George he sucks. You suck, George. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it says tell George he sucks. You suck. I got a uh, horrible obituary. First, we had Preacher Road die. All the great left-handers are dying. And now Herb Score dead at 75. Isn't that a shame? Yeah, whatever. He used to smoke, smoke big stogies, kind of like, can we get the definitive word on Stan Major, dead or alive? 
I'd like to find out how my two grand is doing from how many years ago was that? About 20 years ago? At least. More than that, because I was living over at that other house on uh, 121st Ave. Like 20, maybe 22 years ago. That two grand ought to be worth what? About uh, half a million now? At least. And by the way, for those people who keep kvetching about uh, PSAs and spots, let me tell you, I hate to break the news to you, but the economy's in the toilet. Okay? We're in a damn depression. GM is on the verge of going bust. And these people are worried about PSAs on the streaming. You keep screaming about the streaming. And like one emailer, I'll get to it eventually if I find it, like he says, it's for free. So what's the big deal? You know, it's free hearing the streaming. It doesn't cost you any money. So what do you care whether they're making money on it? Whether they're, It's just there. Right? Right. Now, is it an expensive thing for them to be uh, streaming the signal out there? Does it cost them any money? I have no idea. What do you think, Fatso? No idea. Well, why not? Because I don't know that stuff. That's technical uh, computer crap. That's supposed to be right up your alley, Sally. Anyway, uh, the fake Greg Budell is obsessed with Dave Hagen. It says, I like Dave. He's a handsome man. He's a producer and host on Sirius 124. He says, a lot of people in the building talk about you, including Gary Delavate and John Heine, Howard Stern's producers. Is that how you pronounce Gary's name? I don't know. Oh, I don't either because I don't listen. I was forced to listen to that trip up here back in May. Oh, never again. So uh, the fake Greg Budell is obsessed with Dave Hagen, which means these are probably coming from Dave Hagen. Because it says he's a handsome man. He looked a human. I wouldn't say he was handsome. He looked human. Mm -hmm. Ready for this obit? First Preacher Row and now Herb Score. Oh, and he was only 75, like a, like a, a kindergarten kid. Former Cleveland, and you know how many pages on this obituary? Six freaking pages. Can you believe that? I could read this till midnight and still not finish it. Former Cleveland Indians pitcher and broadcaster Herb Score died this morning at 75 at his home in Rocky River. The Indians confirmed today. He was a brilliant Indians pitcher whose baseball career was virtually ended at age 23 when he was hit in the right eye by a line drive off the bat of Gil McDougall of the Yankees, May 17, 1957. I remember that like it was yesterday. I also remember Herb Score used to smoke big stogies. That's, that's what made me think of Stan Major. Big stogies. Now, does it say uh, here where uh, he died uh. from? What? Oh, I'm just uh, doing my Stan Major impersonation. Then he became a Cleveland sports casting institution calling Indian games on radio and TV for 34 years. More than anyone else in the city's baseball history. He gained a loyal following, although he didn't have the greatest voice of elocution. He was like a favorite un... Uh, something uh, talk, uh, tanked ba I don't know, I can't read it. <laughs> oh, he was like a favorite uncle who talked baseball, I see. It's chopped off. Let's do a few shows on that, how we get rid of the chopping off. For me, sure. broadcasting games like sitting in the stands, talking to the fellow sitting next to me, he said. Still, to those who had seen his talent on the mound, it was comparable to Napoleon becoming a war correspondent. Now, what is it? does it say here what he died from? Ted Williams said that Herb Score had the best fastball of any left-hander he ever faced, said the late Ken Coleman, one-time Indian sportscaster. Ken Coleman was great, by the way. He was also a former Red Sox broadcaster and did the Browns games for many, many years. Back in those days before expansion, each team in the NFL had its own TV announcer. They had their own regional telecast, like uh, Chris Shankle did the New York Giants, and Ken Coleman did the Browns, and like that. Do you know that, Chris? Did not know that. There you go. And Dowdy Kurt Dowdy did the um, uh, Patriots, I believe, the uh, Boston Patriots, I think. The lefty was the American League Rookie of the Year 1955 when he won 16, lost 10 for the Indians. Score received 18 of 24 votes from the voters for Rookie of the Year. He st had struck out 245 batters, a rookie record that stood for 29 years till Dwight Gooden broke it with the Mets in an era of wild swingers. But a beep, but a boop, but a bop. What, where did he die from? Maybe it doesn't say. 1957, Gil McDougall, the second batter of the game, reached for a low pitch and lined it back at score. The ball crashed into his face, breaking his nose, cutting his right eyelid and causing swelling and hemorrhaging of the cheekbone and eyelid. Third baseman Al Smith picked up the carom and threw out McDougall at first. Remember Al Smith? I do. Score was knocked to the ground, bleeding profusely. He was immediately surrounded by teammates and Yankee players alike. Teammate Vic Wirtz, playing first base, rushed over, then retreated when he saw the blood. Ooh, fat. I mean, how can you be a Major League Baseball player and be afraid of a little bit of blood, you know? 
a, a gallon or two of blood. I'm looking through this thing. I want to see what he died from. He was 75, you know, because I'm trying to think about what I'm going to croak from pretty soon. I mean, I'm 66, although I never got hit in the head with a baseball. On October 8, 1998, Score was almost killed in a car accident. He'd been inducted to the Broadcasting Hall of Fame the previous night in Akron, Ohio, then left the hotel early that morning to drive to Florida. He was alone in his Buick Riviera when he pulled into the path of a tractor trailer in New Philadelphia, south of Cleveland, 80 miles. Collided with a tractor trailer. Score suffered hip and head injuries in the crash. He was on his way to Florida for a case. This just keeps repeating a lot of stuff over and over and over again. It doesn't say what he croaked from, though. He was 75. Just, just a spring chicken, like I said. You think 75 is old? Yeah, it is, but not when you're 74. Correct. The biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560. You're 66. Big sports leader. I kind of feel clueless right now, Bill. Kind of like a eunuch in a whorehouse. All right. Thirty-one. Okay, here's the definitive answer from the real Johnny Dark, who's just obsessed. He's even angrier than the Jolly Joe Bell today. Johnny's just whipped up into a right-wing frenzy. Ray, retire! He says, despite your great talent, you've been blacklisted in the industry because of your backstabbing ways. A lot of important people respect you in the industry, but won't hire you because you've burned too many bridges. Guess what, Johnny? I'm doing okay. Had a really great dinner on my birthday, Ruth Chris. I'm going off to Woodbine at 2 o'clock, have a good time this afternoon, plunging my guts out. Got plenty of disposable income. Even after January 1st, I'll still be doing fairly well, Johnny. I've been blacklisted in the industry. See, I'm not a backstabber, I'm a front stabber. I come right out on the air, right out in the open, and I tell people what I think. I don't backstab, in spite of what George says. What? Yeah, here's a Mark, Mark Murphy about PSAs. Some public service announcements do play what seems like 20 times during four hours on the streaming. Well, don't worry about it, okay, Mark? Like he says, the streaming is free. I'm in no position to complain. Good. Jesus. At least he admits that he's in no position to complain. Good. Then why'd you bring it up in the first place? Who cares? The spots on the streaming. Oh, and it's the big O again. Rock that... solid. Who cares? Leave the guy alone. He wants to make a living. He's got a family to support, okay? Even if he thinks he's rock solid. I told you we're in a depression. DHL closes hubs and cuts 9,500 jobs. Thanks, Brandon. Delivery company DHL said yesterday it will cut 9,500 U.S. jobs. And by early next year, will focus its U.S. Express arm exclusively on international offerings. DHL U.S. Express will close its domestic ground hubs and cut the number of stations to 103 from 412. They are off Soros. The announcement came during a Monday morning press conference in Bonn, Germany, by Deutsche Post World Net, a parent company of DHL U.S. Express. This is the right move for our U.S. Express operations, given the current economic climate, and for the long run, said John Mullen, global CEO of DHL Express. But a beat, but a boop, but a bop. The company said it will retain three to 4,000 U.S. Express employees who will focus on international customers. The new round of cuts follows 5,400 job reductions earlier this year. Everybody's out of work. Everybody's starving to death. And Johnny Dork says, oh, you're blacklisted in the industry. They all respect you, but uh, you're a backstab. Good. How about being a front stabber to you, Johnny? You loser. Lifeless loser, that's you. With a personality like a dead man. Remember that time he, after we gave him lunch that one time? Yep. Made the mistake of inviting me in a studio. And a few days later, he shows up again. Right. And somebody comes waltzing in to give us the breathtaking news. Oh, Johnny Dark's out at the uh, front desk to see you guys. Didn't we send him away? Yep. We said, go away, Johnny. You bother us. It's like the bird that time when he showed up every day in Tampa at WSUN. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Every long day. After, long after he'd gotten canned. And, you know, one or two days would have been fun. It was fine. And then every, every morning when I would show up there at SUN, uh, he showed up. Every day all week. He showed up all five days, I do believe. You're right. Yeah, I am right. 
It's called inflicting yourself on people. One thing about me, I don't inflict. If you don't want nothing to do with me, I don't want nothing to do with you. Fine. Let's keep it that way, Johnny. Go away. Take your right-wing, hysterical, racist leanings and go away. The, that email that he sent me that day, I, you were on vacation that week or something. You were gone. You were sick. Mm -hmm. It was the most... Well, I didn't read it on the air anyway. I was just too sick to even read it on the air. Tragic. Racist, sick, hate. Here's the poll, 234 votes. Now, what does that give us? Way over 1,000 combined, right? We cheat. We had 896 and what, 234? So 900 and 234, 1134, 11, 1130. Yep. 1130, Christ, it's a long show. 1235. Four hours is too long, Jolly Joe. I say double the money, half the hours. Two hour show, double the money. Why was he so uptight about that? Mm. About giving out my email address. Mm. Like that's a big deal. He already did it once before, and he admitted it, and then he got all the, oh, gee, you have to be a crazy person to get so hysterical about it. And I said to him, you have to be a crazy person to give out somebody on the air's personal email address. And, the, and since then, we haven't talked much. Or maybe since it was when Chris got him under his wing. Is he under your wing? No. Checking out your thing? No. 200 and how many votes we got? Take a look at it. I don't want to look over there again. I got 259. The reason I don't want to look is because Bush is on TV. 260. Bush is. Murderer. Even as a museum, the museum. intrepid still answered the call to service. The decrepit sure, 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 sure. You got it? I got How what? Wait, did you say 259? It we doesn't really make any difference. Whatever we got. I could at least tolerate an insult to my intelligence, 54. Spouse, 23. Penis size, 22. Family, 20. What about kids? Why don't we put that on there? Like there you people, go. you know, I always say, huh? Adding it now. Kids, especially babies. I don't want to put separate, mm -hmm. you know, but... Right, kids is Oh, fine. is it the cutest little baby you ever saw? Look at the no. little baby. And then no, you it's look alive. At it and like, oh, my. Because most babies, I hate to say this, most babies are ugly. Am I wrong? I don't share that opinion, but there are very ugly babies. Right. I think most babies are cute, but then every once in a while... Most babies are cute? Most babies are very cute. They don't have any, like, uh... And they get uglier from there. What, teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Penis Hair. size 22. Family 20. Mama 16. Don't knock my mama. You can knock my mama all you want. She don't care. She's still dead. You miss my mama? Uh, I've only met her twice. Maybe once. Did she hate you, too? Performance in bed 16. My weight 14. Line of work 10. Ethnicity or race 9. Political preferences 8. Gang 6. Well, what does that mean, my gang? We got gang members listening? Uh, I guess. Yo, yo. Jesus, God. Disability, six. Beer preference, five. Choice of car I drive, three. My looks, three. Go right ahead. I look like crap. Income level, two. Gender, two. Native language, two. School or college, two. Sports team preference, two. Height, two. Sexual persuasion, two. Gay. Religion, two. Taste in women or men, one. Fashion style, one. Yeah, don't knock my fashion style. Name one, and none yet for state or region, native country, or breast size. And that's because we don't have all that many ladies. Although we sure get a lot of uh, emails from ladies. But they don't seem to, like, vote on the poll very often. Maybe they're busy. I'm busy, you know? I mean, they're ladies as far I'm... as we know, right? What? They're ladies as far as we know. Oh, that's true. No, I don't think we have too many made-up ladies. Do you? We'll never know. No, I, I don't, but we'll never really know. Well, see, now, you, now you're verifying what I said yesterday, and that is that this is the most anonymous form of communication. That's right. Other than maybe a letter in a bottle. Hey, Neil and George, when you mentioned those old baseball injuries, it reminded me of Ron Fraser was on third base conducting an uh, interview during batting practice. A straight line drive struck Fraser in the nose and broke a finger, says Joe. Well, thanks for the information, Joe. Poor old Ron Fraser. He had a lot of good times, I'll tell you that. He was always really nice to me. You know, remember Ron Fraser, the coach of the Keens? Yep. Never been the same since Ron Fraser left that franchise. Franchise. You know, it's a, it's a college team franchise. Well, it is. It's all big business, man. Big business. Especially the football. Big business. That's why we got a 75-hour post-game show and pre-game show on a Keens game on Thursday. Right in the middle of the daytime. I probably shouldn't mention, I don't want to get your buddy Jolly Joe all bent out of shape, but even back in IOD, back in the day, 
Canes football never had any numbers. You know what I mean? No. So let's hope that everybody's TV... Is that game televised on Thursday night? I'm sure it is. Yeah, it'll probably be ESPN. Well, don't be watching it on TV. Listen to it on radio. I mean, TV, you won't be hearing Joe Zagacki. Joe Zagacki sucks, And Don Bailey Jr. Sacrifice of those who have worn the uniform. Twine like him. 20 till 1 at QAM. Week after week, more and more people are taking advantage of Neil's half price deals on WQAM.com. And this week, we've got a great one for you. The legendary Shula Steakhouse. Starting Thursday at noon, you can buy $100 certificates for just 50 bucks. The Shula Steakhouse, the original in Miami Lakes. Home of the best steak money can buy. Shula Steakhouse is reopened after completing a major renovation. Same perfect steaks, same outstanding service with all new decor. Custom center cuts of premium black Angus beef combined with their aging process makes it the award-winning Shula cut. The original Shula's is still the proud home of that humongous 48-ounce porterhouse. Better bring a gigantic appetite for that. To be part of history, make your reservations today. Call 305-820-8102. And now, thanks to yours truly, you'll be able to buy $100 certificates for half price. Just 50 bucks, and the store opens at noon this Thursday on most un- uh, astonishing WQAM.com. <laughs> Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. The sports leader. Tony Dark. Stan Major. Now on News Talk Radio 610 WIOD. If you missed the last show, you missed this. Well, then what the hell is your problem? Kane is in New York, fella. When he would do a show, I don't want Kane back. I just told you that. But well, then who do you want? I think who do you want? You want Alan Burke? No, of course not. I think you want Joey Reynolds? No, of course not. Then what the hell do you want on the air? Is Silence? I mean, is that all we have to choose? What do you... Give me a name. But is that all we Who have? do you want? Is that all we have what to What kind of content... Do you want during 2 to 6? I do. Hear the next Stan Major show. This afternoon at 2 on News Talk Radio 610. WIOD. I've got sunshine on WINZ. <laughs> when there's a hurricane blowing, baby, it's still the month of May. Are you sure? From 2 to 6. I guess you say what can make me feel that way. Stan Major, talking about Stan Major, Stan Major. Oh, my God. I've got so much honey than the bees can be me. Smoking on a stogie. <laughs> I guess you say two till six. W I N Z. Stan Major. Talking about Stan Major. Stan Major. Get ready to do the hey, hey, hey. We still have no information about Stan's whereabouts. Is he dead or alive, huh? I'm dying over here. And where's my two grand? Anyway, I got a follow-up from Lucas. Aren't you excited? And this one in a with a blue background. Ooh. It says, so you want a follow-up from Lucas? Well, here it is, you moron. The fake Lucas, of course. 
Johnny Dark says, I don't know what your email you're referring to. I'm not a racist. Why do you treat people uh, who love you like crap? Could it be your relationship with your father? Yeah, that must be it, Johnny. It's really funny because this was before the election, and uh, I didn't believe it was the real Johnny. And then he sent me a uh, email, a horrible, racist crap about Obama. And then uh, somebody uh, claiming to be his sister said, oh, yeah, that was really him. And then he emailed me back and said, oh, yeah, that was me. And yada, yada. So we got too many Johnny Dorks out there. I don't know. I think it's the real one. The fake Adam Kirshner says, did you ever watch Hell's Kitchen or Kitchen Nightmares on Fox? No. Chef Gordon Ramsay is great. No. If you had a talk show, he'd put you and Howard. If he had a talk show, he'd put you and Howard to shame. He's great. You know who that is? Yeah, I'm a big fan. P.S. Joe Z and Don Bailey Jr. are embarrassing. They sound like they're broadcasting a high school game. Joe is funny when he gets excited, though. Now, what is that under? Is that under Oh My? Or is that under Joe? Oh My. It's under Oh My. How do you know? Oh My! Oh My! Oh My! Oh My! How do you know? Because I've played it. Have you? Keep your nose out of our DCS, baby. Oh, and then uh, the fake Greg Budell says, Dave Hagan is trying to call on the bat line, but nobody's picking up. That's because we're not taking any calls right now, okay, including Dave Hagan, who evidently is looking for some attention. See, you know it's the fake Greg Budell when he can't spell his own name right? And that's generally a pretty good tip-off. You know yeah. what I mean? What do you mean? So we wish you all the best, Dave Hagan, but uh, we're not going to interrupt the show so we can take your call. Here's the fake Alice Rantel. It says, I love it. Was that Scott Chapin in the old WIOD promo? That was, yes. Who was doing the Stan Major's song? Sounded like EJ from WINZ. No, that was, uh, what's his name from INZ? What that was his name? I forgot. I'll, I'll, it'll come to me. Will it? Or, or not. EJ from WINZ. Get out of here. Get out of here, fake Alice. 300 votes even on our second poll. Not too bad. That was, uh, da, 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 da. I can't think of it. Maybe maybe the initials are in there. Hum a few bars. No, that's the, wait a minute. No, not no, on there. Thought you had it. It's the guy that uh, replaced me in the afternoon when they put me on Zeta in the morning, and they put that guy on in, in middays. Jeff Gonzer. No. On INZ. Oh. Boy, I had it on the tip of my tongue. So easy to forget. Anyway, let's get to the important stuff. Lucas with a follow-up. With a blue background, no less. So you want a follow-up from Lucas? Well, here he is, you moron. You... You fairy. Okay, dummy, you have a lot of nerve reading my first email over the air. Oh, yeah, right. Like, I don't read all the emails over the air. First, they challenge you to read it, and then you read it. Oh, you have a lot of nerve. First of all, you need to learn your laws. Understand that you've got no right to do that without my permission. Guess what? Wrong. <laughs> When you send somebody an email, they can do whatever they want with it, including wipe your ass with it. Secondly, you were upset by what I said. No, I was not the least bit upset. I was amused, just as I expected you to be, since you can't handle even constructive criticism. Yet you said absolutely nothing to dispute the facts I gave you about the other talent in the market. Talent, my ass. George Sedano sounds like a little kid. And Castronova hasn't had an original. Even when he takes a BM, it smells like somebody else's Castronova. And your diminished skills as a radio personality when compared to them. Just look at the numbers, you old fool. They don't lie. Even an atheist should have the ability to do the simple math. And that simple math reveals that Paul Castronova kicked your bum. And so did the rest of the people I mentioned. Wrong. You simple and mindless buffoon. I can't stand listening to your show anymore, just as I said. It used to be funny. Now it's just annoying. Keep annoying yourself, Lucas. Keep annoying. Turn it up real loud now, Lucas. I will ask you once more to go out gracefully and step aside before you simply get run over. Something, something far, I can't read it. It's blocked off. Oh. Far something and talking about pooping in your pants. Seriously, is that better than talking about sports? Yes, it is. I'd rather talk about pooping my pants than sports all the rest of my life, okay? Talking about games that are over with already or games that haven't been played yet. Oh, my God. You could, at the very least, talk about sports half the time, like Sid Rosenberg does. Yeah, maybe I could get those big numbers like Sid does, huh? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I could get two shares like Sid does. Even when they have an up book, he still gets squat, because he sucks. Half the things you see on the air should be illegal, I guess. I'll have to put up with it for another five years. I'll have to put up with it for another five years, since you and the other mindless Obama supporters put that socialist in charge. Oh, now we're getting an understanding of what this mm -hmm. is all about. Sour grapes from another right-wing loser. You, sir, are a foolish pile of elephant turds, and I can't wait for you to get scooped up by the zookeeper. In the meantime, I will listen with a clothespin on my nose. Oh. P.S. Keep making fun of Christians. Can't wait to see the look on your face when you have to face your judgment, funny man. 
Yeah. See yeah. the look on my face when I'm dead. I hope we're all there together. Yeah. I want to see the look on his face. Yeah, let's see the look on your puss, Lucas. A man too stupid to turn off a show that he reviles, that he hates. Screaming at the moon, go away, go away, cock a moon. And the moon just stays there, just sits up there in the sky, just like I'm going to sit here. And, and, and the, the tip-off is when he says he's going to have to put up with it for another five years, he'll listen with a clothespin on his nose. How about putting a clothespin in your... Rectum. Sounds more likely. Maybe that's where your nose is, Lucas, because it sounds to me like your nose is out of joint. Bah, bah. So I guess Lucas is probably Dan from Maryland. Oh, it's got a phone number here. You want to call him? Let's do it. Not on the air. Call him up and see if it's a real person, uh, Chris. All right. Dump it. Dump it after I give it. I don't want to give it on the air. 305-324-8811. The biggest names, the best talent. You're listening to Sports Radio 560 WQAM. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Well, this is Scott Burrell. And when I'm up in Boca Tica slapping old women with painted lips around the pool, I listen to the Neil Rogers one to two hours. Yeah, I mean, I listen to the Neil Rogers fire and balance one to two hours. Hey, Burrell. What? By the way, son, uh, I've been giving it some thought. Uh, see? Uh, well, what do you think of this? I knows that me and you can do. Much better go in six to ten and not at five. A Gentile and a cranky Jew. I think we might be happy to get there. I think you really got out of your mind. You gotta have your wee wee bed strapped on too tight. No chance I'll do a show with you. <laughs> I'd rather die. We'd be crappy together. Why, I'll have you. Big Bucky Jew from Brooklyn Heights. I've been raped by everybody but you. You're not my type. Me and Mo, that would blow. No way that if we had a fight that you'd survive. Who'd want to hear a genitile and pushy type? That's crappy together. For me, is much better six to ten, not five. It's only right that I should get more sleep at night. I think we might be happy together. What, 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 what? Happy together. What, 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 what? What do you be better? No. What, what, what? What, 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 what? One oh two at five sixty WQM. Now, are you getting the same emails I am from the fake Greg Vidal about call uh, Dave? Uh, I, I, I'm not so blessed, and I'm glad. Really? Yes. Please tell George to call Dave at three oh five yada yada. So he must have a cell phone number. Either that, or maybe he's in the town right now. Who knows? He certainly wants a lot of attention. Should I fax you this uh, fax? This email? If you want, forward it. Oh, I don't. I don't care. Forward it. Do I still have it on? Do here? I want to? Do I want to call this person? Dave Hagen, you don't know this oh, I know Dave Hagen. I, I have Dave Hagen's phone number. Why do I, uh, do we, you got a message for him or something? It says, please tell George to call Dave. Why? I don't know. If you call, maybe you'll find out. I'm sure that's maybe a, not. Uh, what? I'll call Dave. You don't have to give me Dave's number. You got it? Assuming it's the same. Maybe it's Greg Budell. See, you're no fun. Now, look how much fun it was... Dialing that fake 305 number, which I told you wasn't a Hallandale number. That was down 244. And who supposedly is uh, telling me to call Dave Hagen? The fake Greg Budell. Okay. Maybe, maybe that phone number that he gave us is the fake Dave Hagen. You want me to give it to you and I'll dump it? Or do you hey, want me to just hey Dave Hagen, how you doing? Somebody, yeah, hi, Dave. Uh, uh, okay, I'm, George, I'm on the phone George ain't interested, okay? Maybe Dave's hey, got an in for us uh, at Sirius. 
I'm sure not. Maybe Howard's starting those rumors again. Oh, I want Neil Rogers on my network. Oh, remember that? Yeah. Yep. No, you don't. You do? Yeah. Oh. How'd that work out? Oh, Jay Michaels is who did that uh, Stan Major song, by the way. And that's from the surly, extra surly Johnny Dork. Extra surly. Even more surly than fat-ass Joe Bell. And wait, Chris, not, not fat Chris, but a listener Chris says Stan Major's email is so-and-so, which I'm not giving it out. And P.S. Paul and young Ron now read emails on the air. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, God. Has this man ever done anything original in his life? No. No. If Neil takes a big bloody dump on the on a balcony, then uh, Paul goes home and uh, takes a big bloody dump and then you're on the stoop. Hey, stoop. What is wrong with that man? And then he makes up these stories. Oh, I ran into Neil Rogers at the Sog Rat. Remember that? Several years ago? I have met that creature once at a Panther game many, many years ago. Other than that, I never laid eyes on him. I never spoke with him. I never. And, and then we heard all the stories about how he was begging the people at QAM for the morning show. Remember that? And then he yep. denied it. Oh, no, I love Clear Channel. Yeah, right. So Dave says hi. You spoke to him? Yeah. yeah. Hagen. And, you know, he is on Sirius on uh, the NFL channel, NFL yes. Network, whatever he is. And uh, he might come down Super Bowl week. You know, we'll get together and everything like that, like sometimes we do when he comes to town. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell Neil hi, but he's got nothing to do with the real or fake Greg Budell and whatever number you've got there. If it doesn't match the one in my phone book, obviously it ain't him. Well, wait a minute. Let, let me give you the number. Part, for, part of it. Just forward me the email. All right. No, Jesus, God, that's that's like work. Forward me the email. God, when I got it right here somewhere, where is it? Here it is. 305-72. Yeah. Okay, and the last number of the uh, last four digits is four? Yeah. So it's the right number. So it's somebody knows, uh, and, and he didn't know where that was from? Mm -hmm. So it's obviously somebody who's got his number. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got your number, Dave. Where now is he? He's not down, though. He's in New York? No, he's in New York. Oh. He was a good kid. He never yeah. stole a freight train. Nice guy. Yeah. He uh, helped get me hired. Like I said, I never liked Dave Hagen from the minute I laid eyes on him. Yeah, he helped get Maki you hired? Bastard. Yep. How do you do that? Because uh, when I was interning, I was basically running the Saturday, Sunday morning shows when Pat Pisani was here, and he was he would leave. I'd come in about 9 o'clock in the morning. Pat would leave about 9.30 in the morning. And so I'm here by myself with Hagen. Running like Joe Rose show and then uh, Goldie and stuff like that. So when hey uh, when Pat Pisani finally left, they were Jim, trying to figure out who to Jim hire. Pisani? Pat Pisani. Oh. And when uh, so they're trying to figure out who to hire, and Dave goes, "Well, why don't you hire the guy that's been running the show for the last two months?" And hey, uh, there was like, "Oh, who's that?" He's like, uh, "Your intern, Chris Whalen. He's only been doing this for the past couple months by himself, basically." So uh, that's how I got hired. You said you're a whale of a guy, huh? See. Si. Well, uh, that that's great. Then you owe Dave Hagen. Oh yeah, Dave Hagen's a great guy. Well, maybe you ought to take a little time out from your extracurricular activities with Jolly Joe and consort with Dave Hagen next time he comes down. Sounds good. <laughs> oh, no. Woo! And we'll charge so it to you, you, right? I beg your pardon? We'll charge it to you? Yeah. Charge it to me. Allison says, the fake Allison, because the email is Betsy and Jean. Fake Allison says, Neil, love your show. Always have, always will. But please keep George away from the microphone. When you're gone, the show is terminal with him behind the mic. He is boring, boring, boring. He's probably a nice guy and very helpful behind the scene, but a talk show host, he ain't. Happy belated birthday wishes have many, many more. So I guess this isn't supposed to be the uh, fake Allison that works at QAM. It's just some other fake that hates you like poison. Oh, gee, I'm going to cry. Oh, here's Lucas again. You have a lot of nerve reading my first email over the year. Come on, Lucas, keep them coming, baby, with a fake uh, phone. I wonder what the Lord is going to think when you're at the pearly gates that, to know that a good Christian like you is making up phony uh, phone numbers and sending harassing, evil, hateful emails. Hate. The Dow's down 243, by the way. It says the president redefecates historic aircraft carrier. Oh, here we go. Here's the fake Joy Fitch. <laughs> Joyce. Nice going, Joyce. This is this is one of the best. I love these. Don't you just love it? A lot. You mean Jay Michaels? Last I heard, Jay was on Kiss, says Joey, the fake Joey Reynolds. Is Jay Michaels on Kiss? Mm hmm. 
You don't know? How could you I, not know? What about Johnny Dork? Who's he on Kiss? Out, right? I know, know Darlene know? Evans is on Kiss. The end. That's all I know. And that's it? It's the only person I know over there. Well, come on. Let's uh, get some spy reports and find out if Jay Michael's really on Kiss. Hey, Jay, remember when you butchered up my show on INZ? He's a good guy, though. He was always nice to me, to my face. Now, he's a good guy. See, that's because I got a, I got a bad reputation in the business. Joyce Fitz, the fake Joyce, sends me this. She says, Neil, you're really pushing my buttons, you old fag. You are you are out if I hear one more email from that disgusting fat Chris about his wild days and nights with my good friend and savior of that godforsaken radio station, Joe Bell. As a precautionary measure against slip-ups on the air, I'll be proofreading all your email. I've cleared this with him already. We can't have talent ruining the sparkling reputation of management and ownership. On a separate matter, it would appear by some ridiculous shipping error, some feminine products and ple personal pleasure items have been accidentally shipped to the studio in Miami. Tell George or whoever handles that stuff in that place to leave them alone, and I'll be over from Naples with my girlfriend to pick them up over the weekend. <laughs> if you do not follow my wishes, you're fired, old man. Screw you. Joyce Fitch, personal attorney, personal hate monger, and uh, awarded the least farts per year award by the FDA. How do you like that? Joyce is really getting up there. She's getting in the league, the same league with Lucas and uh, Dan from Maryland, and the real, mm -hmm. and Johnny Dork. The only difference being that, oh, now here's more from the uh, fake Greg Budell. George, George was supposed to ask Dave about Mo getting fired from a Sirius. You blew it. You're supposed to get the inside the scoop on that. Was I? What? I said, was I? Well, I don't know. That's what the fake Greg Budell says. We still can't spell his uh, name right. Just obsessive. You know, I'll tell you one thing. It's a good thing for like these five or six people. Or it all could be just one person. Who cares? Right. I'm, right? I'm sure it is one person. No. Johnny Dork is a separate separate case. Now, what was the story with him at Kiss? He walked out or something? I don't know. You don't? I don't. He hasn't been there in a long time. Is he still working somewhere doing a reading liner cards or what? I don't it's know. It's 82 along the coast. Huh? I don't know. That's his uh, forte. Hmm. How many votes we got? Intelligence. Don't insult my intelligence. 74 leading the way. 333 votes. 333. Three, three. And what do we have on the first one? 896? Yeah. yeah. So that's 1,229 votes. Wow. Not that great. Two separate polls. And, and the one yesterday was really good about the uh, duos, duets, the uh, singing duos. Via con Dios. I, I'm really disappointed we didn't hear any Les Paul and Mary Ford. Oh, well. Maybe don't something, a little homework. Mm -hmm. Biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader. Hey, yo, man, what's up with your for costume and sports? Today I'd like to read a letter that I'm writing to all white people today in the spirit of unity and understanding. Dear white folk couple of things you ought to know when i'm born i'm black when i grow up i'm black when i get sick i'm black when i go out in the sun i'm black when i go out in the cold i'm black when i get scared i'm black and when i die I'm still black, but you, my white man, when you're born, you are pink. When you grow up, you are white. When you get sick, you are green. When you go out in the sun, you go red. And when you get cold, you turn blue. When you get scared, you turn yellow. And the happiest time of my life is when white people die, you turn purple. And you've got the damn nerve to call me colored. <laughs> ah, funny stuff, Louie. You fairy. 117 at 560 WQAM. Happy Tuesday to you. we got the big O coming up at 2 o'clock. Celebrate that big what? I said thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Let's see. Andre says, just moved to Port St. Lucie for four months. Anything up here to look forward to? Yeah, getting out. P.S. The mosquitoes are the size of birds. I wonder if that's the nuclear power plant in Jensen Beach. Yeah, yeah. 
That's Andre from West Park living in Port St. Lucie the next four months until my mom finds a house for rent in West Park again. We had to move the landlord for a closed house we were renting from her. Well, I'd call up Joyce and sue the landlord. <clears throat> if anybody can get it done for it, it's that Joyce bitch. Here's one that says, I hear that you're, I hear you saying about how all the walking you do now has saved your life. If that's the case, why not move to Brickle? Uh, oh my God. Would you want to live on Brickle Avenue? I don't know if you paid me. You probably have never seen it. It's almost entirely new in the past five years. Arguably the finest example of downtown living anywhere. It's extremely clean, beautifully landscaped, extremely safe, plus no homeless. There are tons of awesome restaurant shops, etc., within walking distance of all the beautiful buildings. Also, I know how much you dislike much of South Florida because you dislike being near certain races or ethnic groups. Really? But I'm pretty sure you'll find the people there to your liking. I dislike South Florida because I don't want to be near certain races or ethnic groups. I got news for you, man. Toronto's got more races and ethnic groups than you'll have, than you could shake a stick at. Do you shake your stick at them? I dislike South Florida. What? Do you shake your stick at them? Yeah, I shake it. I shake my stick at it. What a moron. That sounds like something Johnny Dork would write. Some kind of psychotic, hateful swill from a doodah guy. Oh, no. Oh, someone took gregbudel.com, it says. Whatever that means. It's a picture of footy. I guess that's footy and Budel. Can you believe that? I believe it. And it's got an attachment. And, j- and all the attachment is just a bigger picture of the two of them. Oh, no, it's Joe Namath. <laughs> well, he looks incoherent, so it looked like footy. It's Joe Namath and Budell. So it is Budell, I guess. Or one of his groupies. I didn't know he had any. Everybody hates you, Greg, including us. Go the hell away. Can you believe that? Well, what is he I doing now? Greg Budell? Remember, he was going to come in and he was going to replace me on this station and he was going to... Oh, that was the rumor. Don't you remember back when I was having the big contract uh, fallout with Jolly Joe Bell and Norma was having a nervous uh, cramp? Oh. And Greg Budell showed up in the building to interview allegedly that one day. Don't you remember that? No. I remember someone showing up. I guess it was Greg. Greg Budell showed up there. I got news for you, Greg. I'm going to stay on the air until I croak just to spite you. Because you are a legend in your own mind. You're the biggest, one of the, not the, but you're one of the biggest no talents who ever came down the pike. He's got a good voice, and that's it. Like Johnny Dork, another one. Good voice, no talent. Nothing. Am I right? Uh, listen, he was on the coast when I heard right. him. Whatever yeah. talent anyone might have had. Reading, reading liner cards with right. a great voice. How would you have heard it on the coast? Well, what does that mean? In other words, he could have been the most spectacular, funny, pizzazzy personality well, was person he funny in the world. Today we, that we had him in the studio? No. Did he have anything to say? No. Anything to offer? No. Anything to contribute? No. Anything to add to the show? No. Was he worth bringing back again? In fact, he showed up again a few days later, and we told him to go goodbye. He go ate a good away. lunch. He did that well. Once. Once, and he came back for uh, an encore, and we said goodbye. That's back in the days when we could actually have food come in there. Mm-hmm. Before Jolly Joe decided to be a real hard ass. Oh, here we go. Today in Salon, the EPA Stalin era. Don't send me any more crap. God, what is wrong with some of you people? Salon.com, something about the EPA. Now, that's silly. The Dow's down 242. Keep mailing it in, Rogers. Keep ma- I will. I'm going to keep mailing it in keep taking the checks. In fact, just put a big fat check in the uh, bank down there yesterday. Big fat one. Not as fat as the one George smoked, but a big fat one. Right. That just galls the hell out of some of these people. Why? I don't know why it's any of their business, but they're just, uh, they have no life. Oh, you're getting paid all that money to, uh, to do that and mail it in? Yeah, that's right. To sit on my fat ass in Toronto where it's uh, overcast, it's hazy, it's gray. It looks just like wintertime out there with no snow yet, thank God. I'm sure Castronova wants to know the temperature. Maybe I'll email it to him. And he can read it on the air tomorrow. Six. Forty-three. Uh, High today, 745. Overcast, it says. Murky. It's really murky. It's murky and the emailers are jerky. I'll tell you, this has been a good show today. I've enjoyed it. Good. You don't think so? It's just fine. I think it's good. been four hours. 
How do you like that, Fat Chris? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you woke him up. You, you've gotten to say that. so cynical and so cold, you can't even acknowledge on the day when we have a good day, which doesn't happen very often anymore. It, it's a fine day. Just it was wait. fine. Just it was can't wait to get me. the hell out of here. The, the weather's only thing nice. Is I got, I got two teeth. Just two. I grind my teeth. In my I hope state. they're opposite each other. I got two teeth opposite each other that ache. Mm. Now one, the one, the upper one has always been sensitive. You know, sensitive to cold. Not real sensitive, but sensitive once in a while. And lately, extra sensitive. And the one on the bottom, which is a gold crown, is also. And, of course, when you got a gold crown and it's rubbing the tooth up above it when you're uh, grinding your teeth, that probably really is not so good. Because the gold crown is like, you know, impenetrable, right? I imagine. Like the tires on my vet. I love my vet. Okay. And my OBGYN. The U.K.'s independent television news dedicated a short segment of a Monday broadcast to briefly explaining several core tent poles of the 9-11 truth movement. What are tent poles? Tent poles? Other than mm -hmm. what they obviously are? A pole that holds up a tent? Exactly. No, seriously, I never heard that expression before. Is it a British thing? Mm -hmm. Explaining several core tent poles of the 9-11 truth movement with new figures showing almost 150 million web pages devoted to 9-11 conspiracies. Here are the big three so-called plot holes in the official version, announced the narrator. Well, I wish I'd have seen that. One theory is that the collapse of both the Twin Towers was caused not by the impact of the planes and subsequent fires, but by controlled demolitions. Theorists point to the uniform crumbling of the individual floors in each tower. The narrator also mentioned a more obscure 9-11 theory, that the planes which hit the WTC towers had shaped charge warheads in their nose cones. Perhaps the most widely discussed theory, that there was no plane crash at the Pentagon, is also mentioned, with evidence cited as the lack of debris and the small impact hole. The program also mentions that the FBI has refused to release video footage of the object impacting the Pentagon, but failed to disclose how many cameras captured it. Specifically, the FBI confiscated 85 videotapes which may contain footage of the attack. The program also outlines questions about the alleged uh, crash in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, citing eyewitness reports of debris raining down across a wide area as if the aircraft had been shot down by a missile. Remember Cheney admitting that they were going to shoot it down? <coughs> Strangely absent was any attempt to summarize questions surrounding the collapse of World Trade Center Tower 7, a highly significant event to 9-11 truth activists, still rife with questions even after the recent National Institute of Standards and Technology report. And it's got a video from ITN broadcast November 10th. I, I'm going to keep this, and it says download video via rawreplay.com. I'm going to check that out later on after I come back from winning $40 million at Woodbine. Biggest names. The best talent. You better pay taxes on that $40 million, Mr. 560 QAM. The sports leader. The biggest names. The best talent. Are you sure? The Mad Dog. Jim Mandich. Jim Mandich. Sports Radio 560 QAM, the sports leader. Greg hates you. Uh-huh. Absolutely. QAM. Now, let me ask you something, because uh, I got a package on a Friday All right. from a chicken neck that was early. Now, was that was that the one for today that I might have gotten today? Uh, I, I don't know. I was on vacation. Hadn't been talking to him. Really? So you don't know if he's starving to death or not? I don't know. I hear he's eating out of dumpsters. Yes. Well, what's wrong with that? There might be some tasty stuff in there. Let me say it again. That uh, uh, What is this stuff from Kentucky Fried? Popcorn chicken. Popcorn chicken. Boy, that is the best. Mm -hmm. They're little tiny uh, nuggets, and they are spicy and just delicious. And lots of that breading that they're famous for on there. All carbs, but nevertheless. 
So the fake Jim DeFita says, I don't believe Jay is at Kiss anymore. I believe both he and Johnny Dark left around the same time. Regards, Jim. Now, maybe this is the real Jim DeFita, you think? No. We never know. Why not? How do you know? I just, I just don't believe anybody anymore. Uh, well, that's the way it is with email. I keep trying to tell you it's the most anonymous uh, of any form, other than putting a note in a bottle, I think. Boca says the package is out for tomorrow. What, what, what does that mean? What, what language are you speaking now? The package is out for tomorrow. It's going to right. be here tomorrow? I guess. Let me, re let me read you what he wrote. Right. The package is out for tomorrow. That's what you just said. Oh, well, see? It didn't Would change. Would you understand it? In other words, it's going no. to get here tomorrow? Not that there's any emergency. He sent it, so whenever it gets there, it gets there. Not that there's any emergency, because whatever he did is certainly a lot better than what comes in on this other stuff. Oh, God. You're right. The Chris Matthews bit and the Sarah Palin uh, perfume. That's it. That's it. That's a medley of their success, including an ACN, too. Although I did like the OJs in jail. Mm-hmm. Didn't you like that one? That it was, was cute. It was okay. Oh, the juice got the screwed. Remember that? That call yesterday? That was one of the great calls we had. Some OJ apologist. Lunatic. Crazy person. Probably one of Greg Reed's old boyfriends. Or maybe, just maybe, he was an old boyfriend of... Roy! Could be. Remember that? Remember that big mm -hmm. black dildo? Whatever happened to that? It's still here. It is? Want to hear it? I'll go get it out of the cabinet. No, no it's okay. Beat the, the microphone down with it. I don't want to hear the dildo. 356 votes on Fat Chris's poll, <clears throat> which means 1252. That's not shabby at all for, for Veterans Day, which, by mm -hmm. the way, here it's, here it's Remembrance Day. And you're supposed to wear your poppy. Aye, poppy. You're supposed to wear a poppy. Are you wearing a poppy? I'm smoking no. a poppy. That's almost like oh. one. Popcorn chicken. Never had that before in my life. I guess they got all kinds of newfangled new stuff there. Yes, huh? they do. They got, like, you know, like chicken sandwiches chicken strips. and strips. Sure. I like the chicken strips. Well, they've had the chicken sandwiches for a long time. I used to like those with cheese. How's Wayne Arnold doing, by the way? Speaking of that, keep waiting for I had those pictures. That's weeks ago now, two, three weeks ago. Pictures of him in, in the uh, restaurant. And it looked like it was pretty damn uh, close to me. Wayne, if you're out there, let us know when you're opening, baby. Kind of rough to be opening in the middle of a depression, though, isn't it? A little bit. 359 bo uh, boats on our vote. 359? Can that be right? Yeah. 1255. Wow. You really did And that's because that's Fatso's back with us today. When Flea was here yesterday, wow, we were really struggling. Struggling with the Flea Meister. He's a good guy. He just uh, got a squeaky voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. When people start comparing you to the Sheik, oh my God, does that say squeaky or what? Come on, Neil, you can do better than that. Maybe he's the fleek, the geek, the geek. <laughs> okay, here's one. Here's an email. They've slowed down now because the good stuff. I mean, you know, the good stuff uh, runs uh, runs its course. You can only have so much good stuff. Isn't that what Sigourney Weaver found out? Right. Some pre-merger NFL announcers. It says, I didn't look these up, promise. Eagles, Jack Whitaker and Stu Nahan. The Redskins, Jim Gibbons. Giants, Chris Shankle and Jack Whitaker. These are the, the TV announcers on the regional telecast of each team. Browns, Ken Coleman. He was great. Colts, Chuck Thompson, another great. Packers, Ray Scott, drunk. He was good. Drunk, dead. Lions, Van Patrick, fat, dead. Cardinals, Jack Drees. Well, I forgot all about him. You might recall a season or two when the Cardinal Giants CBS would give you Chris Shankle for the first half and Jack Drees for the second half. Not a good idea, it turned out, but I think it was um, a precursor of the post-merger world. For further LSD trips down memory lane, check these pages on Wikipedia, and it's got a PS. The PSAs and other mindless QAM promos sure beat the dead air we used to get. I thought my signal had dropped. Yeah, remember that during the writer, the uh, the radio and TV and uh, uh, performer strike. Yeah. We couldn't play any of those spots during the breaks on air. Uh, so so the uh, breaks were all silent, dead air on the uh, streaming. So whatever you're getting now, it's better than four minutes of dead air. Okay? Or maybe not much better, but at least it, it's something. At least it lets you know you still got the signal. Meh, meh. How 
come we only get three and a half hours? You better check anyway. Meh. We're doing the best we can. The Dow is down 280 points. Everybody's going out of business. What do you want from us? Oh, here's the fake Greg Vidal. Scotty says hi. He's laughing about Mo getting fired again. Should anybody be surprised that Mo gets fired again? Is there anybody in the history of the business who's gotten fired more than Mo Howard David? I don't know. We'll have to check into that. Oh, here's a uh, update from a friend. It says, "Okay, let me print it out. It's too too long to read off the uh, monitor. I don't. I just don't like reading off the monitor. I feel like I'm like a, a parrot. You know how a bird cocks its head to the side? No. The hell, you don't. Do you ever have a uh, parakeet or a parrot? Just this morning. No, seriously. For breakfast. We you we used to have parakeets. What a pain in the ass. Petey's a pretty bird. Petey's a pretty bird. I have to disagree with you, the emails. You are well respected in the industry. You're a topic of a discussion quite often in the building, says Jim Defeatus. What what does that mean? You are well respected in the industry. That's what Jim Defeatus said. Where, in, in what building? He's uh, no longer there, is he? Didn't he get canned? Mm hmm. They had to pay them by the pound. They couldn't afford it no more. I don't get it. Okay, here's this one, speaking of Wayne Arnold. First off, happy belated birthday, says a friend. I wonder if he's related to a physician. I started listening to you in 1978, being a hurricane enthusiast. I used to love when you had Dr. Neil Frank, director of the National Hurricane Center on your shows. He was a real character. Yeah, born-again character. Too much of that good old time. He was a good guy, but too much of that good old time religion, you know? El Nino, La Nina, yeah, all that crap. Just thought you'd like to know, I just drove by Wayne Arnold's Royal Castle in the past hour and saw what seemed to be several food service and building contractors working inside the dining and countertop area of the restaurant. The original orange neon lights have been restored and lit up each and every night. It looks like Wayne Arnold should be open within the next 30 days. Oh, about 30, man. Can't wait to take a bite into one of those original Castle Burgers and drink a cold birch beer from a frozen mug. What about the Neely Burgers? Am I like chopped liver or something? <coughs> Love your show from Steve in North Miami Beach. P.S. Yes, I'm the guy who videotaped the live remote at Bizarre Swap Shop in 1990 that you currently have on your webpage. Hello to George as well. Thanks, Steve. Yo, yo. Yeah, that was good stuff. That uh, It was okay. Except for the fact that it had too much of <laughs> that on there, but, you know, nothing's perfect. Joe says, you are still the best. No one rips these brain-dead suck holes that infect our lives in this fetid swamp like you do. This is why I listen, even though I turn over to Stephanie Miller when George is on. Who's Stephanie Miller on? Scare America? Oh, oh God. I always come back if you're on, though. She's very talented and funny. Just your show is playing better. Yes, it is. Picking on you again. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll know when it's time to make your exit. The way you sound right now, I say you haven't lost a step. I worked at Channel 2 when you did the Kendall Toyota show. I marveled at how you arrived just as you were out to go on, parked your vet right by the studio service door, and bolted immediately after your segment was done. Like a thief in the night, you were there, then gone. What was I going to hang around for? Hang oh, around wow. for a Mark Jacobson? Someday, hopefully, a very long time from now, these lifeless a-holes will tune in to hear you, and like the proverbial thief, you'll be a ghost in their tiny little minds. Then what will they do? Mass suicide. Sounds good to me, says Joe. Keep up the good ripping. How do you like that? He used to work at Channel 2. Oh. Isn't that nice? Mm, no. That's where I, have to, I used to have to go. In fact, I used to get lost. To be, where the hell is Channel 2? It's on Sesame Street. No, seriously. Where the hell is it? I could never yonder. figure out where the hell it was. And I'd be driving over there to do that damn show. Probably that's why I showed up at the last minute. I was driving around in circles. Oh, no items in this view. Thank God for a little rest. <laughs> Name. Not even anything else from Dallas. Lucas. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. Nate, Sports
with that noise. Oh, let me take a look at the security monitor. Anything to do with sports? No, oh, just a lot of buildings burning and carnage. My car's okay, though. Oh, go back to the phone. Ricky, 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 Fourteen oh two at five sixty WQAM. I still think that would have been a hell of a show. Chicken Act doing the uh, Mo doi, 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 doi. and Geldy. That's right. Well, what the hell do we know? You know, nothing. What's it got to do with ball games? Nothing. Would have been a panic. Would have gotten a gigantic number. Would have had an audience. I mean, not like jerks, of course, or not like the Kenny and Blow morning show. Last night I went to bed and I was lying there and I started thinking about Robert Griefer, the Lord of the Board. Mm-hmm. The uh, what was the rest of it? Oh, Robert, Robert Reaper, Reaper, the Grim, Grim Reaper. Reaper, the Lord of the Board. And I thought to myself, Kenny Walker, is there a bigger putz in the world than you are? Here are the cuts for Saturday, November twenty ninth, nineteen ninety seven. Twenty nine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't forget about number nine. Robert Reaper, the Grim Reaper, the Lord of the Board. Kenny Walker. I mean, just just an accident waiting to happen. Now, he's on the coast. See, people who have no talent to do, like, a talk show or a personality show, they wind up on the coast reading liner cards. It's 87 along the coast. Like that. Only he sure as hell didn't have Johnny Dark's pipes. It's one thing you got to admit. Johnny Dork had a real set of pipes. You ever smoke Johnny Dork's pipes? No, never did. Never got invited. Here's the poll, 372 votes. Oh, before we get to that, we got one from George's wife. From the fake Crystal Rodriguez. Subject, I hate George. Uh-huh. Neil, hi, sweetie. Why is my husband such a D-bag loser? Thank God he's back at work this week. Now I can go back to slobbering on the yard man's knob. I should probably have checked with Joyce before I read that. Whatever. My husband is such a loser. Last week, he spent every day walking around the house in his underwear trying to do me. I can't stand this stupid spick bastard. No more vacations for him. He sucks. I wish my husband would just die already so I can collect his life insurance. Take the kids with you. I hate you, George. You suck. Signed, Crystal. Probably fairly close to the truth, though. I would. Mm-hmm. All except about that underwear. Oh. <laughs> I don't think he's got any left for you, honey. He's, got, he's busy on Thursdays. So you didn't really fall and hit your head? No, sorry, didn't fall at all. Why do these people make up such astonishing, ridiculous crap? I don't know, it's great. Here's one from Peter, says, I don't know if you can open strange links, but this is fun for MSNBC fan, and there's a link, I'm not going to do it. Thank you from a long-time listener, keep up the good work. We are not out of the woods yet by a long shot. Don't let the efforts get you down, says Peter. I won't, and don't send me any more links. Here's one. It says, Hi, Uncle Neil. At Temple with my dad at Cemetery Village during the High Holy Days, I was shocked to see Robert Wexler sitting four rows in front of us. He was shaking like he had to pee. The whole hour he was there, now we're all shaking. The live streaming is great, says Jake the Mailman. Well, what does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean, now we're all shaking? Is that a shot at Obama, is that it? And at Bobby Wexler? Good luck to you, Jake. You'll need it. 375 votes on the poll. You know, we could have made 400 on the second poll here. We could have made history. But Chris is a little out of practice because he only works like, you know, every 10th day. So well, I understand yeah. that. We'll, we'll let you off the hook for old time's sake. Well, thank well, you very it's a, much. It's a breath of fresh air to have you back, and we're ecstatic to know you're going to be with us tomorrow and Thursday. Correct. Not Friday. Friday we got flea back. Unless somebody steps on him first. Here's the poll. I could least tolerate an insult. To, I could least, let me try to get it right. I could least tolerate an insult to my intelligence, 80, family, 35, penis size, 32, spouse, 31, mama, 26, performance in bed, 24, weight, 19, <coughs> political preferences, 14, kids, 12, line of work, 12, ethnicity or race, 12, beer preference, 10, <coughs> gang, 9, looks, 9, disability, 8, yeah, don't be calling somebody in a wheelchair a gimp. You know, I've noticed more and more people lately with um, oxygen. You know, with the 
The watch tube. Yeah. More well, than Woodbine, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they can still afford it. Sexual persuasion, sports team preference, religion, choice of car I drive, income level, gender, native country, native language, fashion style, all those have two. School or college and the height have got a pair. Taste in women or men, one. Name, one. State or region or breast size have none. Don't be making fun of my breast size. See, for fat guys, that's, you know, look at the boobs on that guy. Right? Right. That's nasty. Yes, it is. Like Fat Chris, like on the beach. Do you go to the beach? Not really. I would think not. Where the hell is that thing where he says, look at the boobs? Oh, no, he doesn't say boobs. He says the T word. That's right, Mad Dog. Back in the day. Back in the day when the excuse always was, well, these are a bunch of dumb sports guys. They don't know the difference. And so they can get away with all those words that we can't. Remember that? Yeah. Not anymore. Not since Joyce came to town. Now everything is a big bleep. Take the leap and see if they bleep. That's one of my favorites when they have to bleep stuff on the sports shows. And the, and the host says, oh, gee, did I get bleeped? Did I get dumped? Like the day Zagaki was on that one day for Hank. Did I get carved? Well, there's nothing like getting carved by the best, or whatever he was saying. Did he get carved? Yeah, he was like the Thanksgiving turkey. Boy, that's coming up pretty soon. We already had Thanksgiving here. I forgot all about it. Now, are we off that day? Yes. I think so. so. I hope so. Yes. We already discussed this. Yes. Right. Yes. Now, what do we do on that day, Chris? Do we got a ball game or something? Hopefully, but uh, last year it was uh, me working with, I think, Curtis and Beast. Doing what? They were doing a non-sports show. Curtis and the Beast? See. You know, when you get old, your hearing starts going. What? Biggest name. I would have sure he said the Beast. Talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports lead. Neil God. We're so sorry, Dennis Rodman. We don't stock and go the teddies in Fuse and Green. Oh, wait, wait. We're so sorry, Dennis Rodman, but the panties come with snappies to secure your little thing. Jackson notified me. He said you're very pretty, but you're dressing too pretty. He asked if you would mind wearing something underneath, but you're way too tall. Way too tall. Every time he jumps, you can see his basketball. Man, you look retarded, retarded for a seven-foot tall guy. Man, you look retarded, retarded for a seven-foot tall guy. No. <laughs> 